Carolina has shown that they've been the comeback kids in their last two games. Finding a way to get offense from everyone up and down the lineup. And they'll need it tonight in a marquee matchup in the Eastern Conference. looking inside PNC Arena where tonight the Hurricanes take on the Florida Panthers. And this is a marquee matchup for sure. Just taking a look at the points percentage leaders this season, the Hurricanes on top with most wins on points percentage 766. Florida Panthers right behind them at 721. So we know these two teams are going to be ready for each other. And Trip Tracy, as we get everybody ready for this game, what excites you about these two teams in this matchup? Good question. Um, something that stuck with me in, in having a conversation with the great one, Wayne Gretzky, last year and speaking about Rod Brindamore, and he mentioned that three of the teams that were in the same division last year, the Lightning and the two teams that are going to play tonight, they play the game the way it should be played. They attack. And when you look at the fact that 32 games above 500, that is such a great example of what the excitement level is in the current State of the Union in the NHL. This is going to be terrific to watch. Well, one of the things that the Carolina Hurricanes have been able to rely on is their depth in players like Jesper Foss coming off of his 500th game. He got a big goal for the Canes to get him kick-started last night against Calgary. You know, in Coach's Corner before the game last night, you know, Rod mentioned in free agency, you don't necessarily know because a guy can look good from afar and then you never know when you get it. Well, he has been everything you hope for and more. In the way that he plays the game, he doesn't cheat the game at both ends of the rink. A nifty set of hands. I mean, look at these highlights. Close proximity to the net, the things that he can do with his hand-eye coordination to find the back of the net, including as big of a goal as was scored last night. Well, for the 500 club for Jesper Foss, looking at his numbers throughout his career, 69 goals, that's a nice number. The assist, 110, 179 points, and ask any of his teammates. Every time he was up for the award as the player's player in New York, he won it with the Rangers. And speaking of another Ranger import, how about Brady Shea, who's turned on the offensive faucet for the Hurricanes from the blue line? When he was a first star last night, watching the Kaniac reaction and appreciation of, of Brady was awesome. That's going to stick with me for quite some time. And he deserves it because he logged so many minutes. And, and now he's getting rewarded for something that I think has been there for a stretch of time. He can skate. He works specifically on trying to improve his skill in terms of execution and confidence. And once he got those two in Columbus, last night after Kokaniemi found him, his head up. That, to me, is an example of confidence. Where do I shoot the puck to beat the Flames goaltender, Vladar? Outstanding to see him rolling like he is right now and getting rewarded. Well, it's great that we've seen the offense from him, but he's going to be called upon defensively to stop one of the best players in the game for the Florida Panthers, their captain, Alexander Barkov. I mean, if you, if you put a gun to my head and said, if you could build with any center in the NHL, there's a very good chance I'm picking Alexander Barkov. You know, Rod, again, in, in the pregame show tonight, talked about how long he is, his size, that long stick. Would have been an unrestricted free agent, but Florida has inked him to an eight-year deal that will commence after this season. Coming off a big two-goal performance in Dallas a couple of nights ago, so he's rolling at the moment. Well, these cats certainly get fat against the Carolina Hurricanes. Alexander Barkov in eight games, five goals and four assists. Jonathan Huberto has been on fire of late. He has got eight points as well, and Anthony Duclair had his best game of his career against the Canes in November. But the Canes turn to a cat in the nets. Alex Lyon leads out the Hurricanes and can Andrei Svechnikov keep the magic up from last night. Lyon in his only start this season for Carolina on November 13th. A 3-2 win for the Canes over the Blues. 27 saves and a 931 save percentage. On the other side of the rink, considerably more experienced. Sergei Bobrovsky, 15-3-3 this season. 
2.56 goals against average and a 918 save percentage. As the Hurricanes and Panthers will meet for the second time of three meetings this year. Florida won all the way back on November 6th. Jordan Stahl will get the start at center. It'll be captain versus captain for the opening faceoff as Alexander Barkov will take the draw for the Panthers. And here we go. It's hockey night here in Carolina on a Saturday. And Tony D'Angelo quickly after the puck for the Canes. Can't clear it. Kept in by Mackenzie Wieger. Carolina looks to clear. Wieger keeps it in again. We'll throw this around the boards. And Carolina will try to play it away as Barkov will get to it first. Now up along the boards. Loose puck controlled by Coach Kenny Yes, Barry Kokaniemi is on a career high six game point streak. He's also got an assist in all six of those games. Carolina Hurricanes have liked what they've seen out of number 82. The last few games for Carolina on this line in particular with Natius and Stahl. Playing the puck behind the net. Is Maxine Mammon. Oh boy, a big hit in the Carolina Hurricanes. Watch Florida get the puck out to center ice. That's what Kokanemi has done. Since he moved back to wing, he's better suited for center, but he has been consistently physical. He has used his size, including setting up that Shea goal late last night. Oh, it's Florida with a chance coming into the zone, and they'll shoot and score! First shot on goal. And Jonathan Huberto continues to be red hot for the Panthers. A minute five into this one. Florida takes a 1-0 lead. That's a tough first shot uh, for Alex Lyon in the transition game of Florida. Very, very good. They push off Carolina. Duclair makes a heck of a play. To be able to position himself to see the open ice. And just enough separation that Pesci couldn't go stick on puck. Not sure Lyon saw it until the last second. And Lyon had to move from left to right. You know, if your gaps are as tight as you want them to be, you know, through the neutral zone, and then Pesci would have been able to go stick on puck. That's a heck of a look from Duclair, who had a, a terrific night the, the earlier meeting in South Florida this season. For Uberdo, and it's going to be his 13th of the year. And now another break as Duclair comes in, and he'll snap one line, makes the save, rebound out of the slot. Uberdo can't get the stick to it, though. Still alive in the Kane zone for Florida. He's jumping into the play with Gudis, but the puck will get past him. That is a big follow-up save from Lyon. He hasn't played since December 18th. Big save. Chance cutting into the front of the net. Opportunity for Anton Lundell. Looking rookie for the Panther. Now, Weger shot from the blue line, and that's absorbed by Lyon. And he'll hang on. And with that trip, let's get a look at the Canes forwards. Well, I have the, the captain highlighted because, as I mentioned in the pregame show, I think this challenge is coming at the right time for him to have a breakthrough game. Last change that you have at home, he's going to play against Barkoff the majority of the night. Can he keep Barkoff off the sheet? And can he produce at the other end? Which, when you just singularly focus on shutting a guy down, and when you don't cheat the game like he does, oftentimes you get rewarded. Sebastian Ajo out to take the defensive zone faceoff, and he'll win it away from Joe Thornton. The Canes will clear Joe Thornton, who just played in his 1700th NHL game. He is truly become the elder statesman of the league as that shot was put over the top of the Canes net by Ekblad. Now right to the side, Lyon has to hang on as Thornton throws the puck to the side as Thornton was all alone to the right of Alex Lyon. Canes will survive and send this puck into the Florida zone where Bobrovsky will play it to Florida looking for an exit, Thornton has it and He'll flip it looking for Weger. Weger will just slide this into the Kane zone, and the Panthers will make a change. You saw Bobrovsky get out quickly on that wraparound. Either you put pucks up on the glass, or sometimes the fake dump in, because sometimes I think he gets too focused on getting back behind the net. Carolina's Jarvis carries it in for Lawrence. Lawrence tries to get it back to step on. Had a goal last night, big goal for the Kings that put him in the lead. Now Slavin, he'll jump up the boards, and he'll get to it. Now deflected away. Kept in by Jarvis. Good play at the point by Stepan. And Carolina tries to get the puck in deep. But Florida will come away. It'll be Lomber into the Kane zone. No pull up. Watch by Slavin. He's able to get the puck across to Brandon Montour. Montour shot right on and Lyon. Blockers that to the boards. Lyon's been sharp after allowing the first one. And now we've got some pushing and shoving in front of the Florida bench with Stephen Lawrence. And Anthony D'Angelo getting involved as well as 
Tony D'Angelo sticking up for his teammate with Lomberg in the middle of it. Because you remember Lomberg was the player who ran over Antti Ranta in November. Well, they love Seth Jarvis, and I think Seth Jarvis draws the initial call. And in comes the care and compete in support of Seth. So let's see if that is the only call. I, th I thought Jarvis drew it. Word at 27, right there for a difference. Yeah, they're going to call interference to the former Hurricane Listerine. Jarvis draws it. It's the second, obviously. It's this, the first hit is clean, the puck's there, and then the follow up. And what a chance. Still early in this game for the power play to even this thing at one. 16.57 to go on the first. As Andrew Burnett looks at it, it's a power ball power play for the Carolina Hurricanes, but the draw is won by Florida. Two minutes on Alex Lyon. Carolina's power play operating at 24% on the season. It's ranked ninth in the NHL. Florida's penalty killers just a touch above 80%. That's 14th as the Canes Natchez will gain the zone. Try to flip one on and we'll get to it back to Natchez. Puck is still in the corner there. Weger would hack at it. Carolina will keep it in. D'Angelo walks the blue line to Teravainen. Teravainen scores! Upper 90 for 86, and Carolina ties it on the power play. Blazing saddles Teravainen. Now he's told me he'd prefer to set up a goal, but he's willing to shoot it when it's necessary. The job for Maho to get the possession along with Trocek and Natius and watch him change the point of release subtly. And get just subtly inside the dots. And a perfect blazing saddle release. It looked like it went end over end to beat Bobrovsky with pinpoint accuracy to the far side. What a beautiful goal. Work has to come before skill and possession before pos position on the power play. The work from Ajo and company to get that possession and then what a, a perfect shot. Well, that is a shot that Mel Brooks, Cleavon Little, and the late Gene Wilder would all appreciate. Yeah. And the from Carolina is even this one up. This matchup we expected between these two teams. As Florida threw the first punch, but Carolina counters on the power play. Tavo Teravainen, his 10th of the season. And Carolina now looking for more, especially the goal. He'll rip one. Bobrovsky doesn't know if he has it. He's got his arm to it along the post, and he'll hang on. Face off coming up in the Florida zone. So, Trip, we got two goals on the board. Let's get to the keys of the game. We have Barkov, but I think Carolina is deeper, and they can match the electrifying nature at center ice. Sam Bennett serving the third of a three-game suspension in the middle of the ice. So centers of attention, and then eliminate the Panthers' transition. That's their bread and butter. If you can, if you can match it, if you can just match that, I like virtually every other category, and I think Carolina has an edge. Uh, Panthers are down a few players. No Sam Bennett, who's serving that game three of the three-game suspension. Now D'Angelo with a shot from the blue line, and Bobrovsky will catch that. And just to further my point about Florida's transition game, they lead the NHL, and the Hurricanes, you know, they're 11. But that's the one area, I think, because of all this disruption in the schedule, Carolina hasn't been able to cohesively create tight gaps, which hurts their transition defense. Oh, wins the draw, and Slavin hammered it on. Bobrovsky has to make the save. Darylina with a good stick in the neutral zone. Puck will find Niederreiter. To Ajo. Jack Blatt gets in the middle of that, though, for the Panthers. And Florida will clear. Now flying into the cane zone is Duclair. An excellent stick, though, by Jacob Slavin, of course. Another defensive play, and Ajo just has the puck out of his reach, and that'll be icing against Carolina. So, Tripp, we've got a chance to look at the injuries and scratches. Well, it, it's the position of goal. I mean, yeah, Antti Ranta clearly is dealing with something. Freddie Anderson. You know, there's a chance he'd go on the back-to-back. -back. Jordan Martinuk and Brendan Smith itching to get in. Freddie was excellent last night. And Etu Makiniemi, who's been excellent in the American League. And the other goaltender, they're both hurt in Chicago. So the Hurricanes are banged up in goal in the organization. And that's why Alex Lyon is getting the nod here tonight. And that's back warm, the other goalie who has a hand injury. Makiniemi a back. Now an opportunity for Florida. Just hanging on the puck a little too long was Verhage. He had a chance to shoot it instead. He threw it back through the top of the blue paint. Now we get a close-up look. 
And Mammon and Niederreiter is the puck. That'll elude Gudis and come out of the zone. And Carolina can get five new players on the ice. Again, speaking for Florida, they didn't have Barkoff in that first game back in November. They don't have Sam Bennett tonight. They also are without a few other key players, most notably along the lines of Mason Marchment and Sam Reinhardt, who are out of the COVID protocol but didn't make the trip because they were on it as they came up here to Carolina. Yeah, no horn quest entering COVID. And he, uh, he's just been entered into the COVID protocol. So Carolina, we can say that uh, you take advantage, but you play with who's here. And that's what the Canes are doing, of course, in goal. This trip just outlined. Carolina. And, and Lyon made two or three good saves after that first shot goal from Huberto that allows you to tie the game. Puck will bounce through the Kane zone. It'll be settled down by Code Kinniemi. He'll play it back for Brady Shea, who's been on fire. The Kane's defenseman has three goals in the last two games played. He's playing his 399th game tonight. Now Seth Jarvis backhands one on. Bobrovsky not ready for it. Does it sneak by him? Still loose. Carolina will get to it. Heads up play by Jarvis. Now Bear will get to it. He'll send it down low for Lawrence. That'll jump over Lawrence's stick. Wendell will try to clear. Kept in at the point. Cole fires it just wide. Around the rink it goes. Bear will get to it. Behind the net, Lawrence finds step on. Step on. He'll throw one out in front. That's deflected just wide by Jarvis. Jarvis now with a puck behind the Panther net. He works it up top. Cole, he'll hammer one. Doesn't get through as Lundell will block it. And the Panthers will clear. Second time from the extreme angle that Bobrov has nearly given up a goal. First Fetchnikov, and there the follow-up on the short side. He's not sealing the short side. He's not even close. And now the Canes putting the pressure on, and the fans in the stands getting louder as this game has certainly had the ice tilted after Florida got the first goal. Less than a minute in, Canes have responded. Power play goal by Tara Vinen. Now this puck is thrown into Florida, and that'll hit a loose stick that was hanging out. Carolina trying to keep in. Slavin reads the play and will back off of it. And the Panthers will backhand one in off the boards. Takes a funny bounce off of the loose arena and attempt to get it in deep. It'll be pushed forward by Gudis, but the Canes will get to it. Jacob Slavin has it. And now Carolina tries to clear the zone. And Ajo finds Tara Vinen to do just that. Back to Ajo, trying to get it across, and that'll bounce on, and Bobrovsky will hang on, and a face-off will be coming up for the Canes in the Panthers zone. Well, the hockey world suffered a tragic loss, as Teddy Balkind, a youth hockey player in Connecticut, lost his life in a tragic accident in the game the other night. And he was just 16 years old. Paying tribute to Teddy Balkine, the high school hockey player in Connecticut, and the just unfortunate accident that happened on Thursday, the other night, where he lost his life trip. And the NHL and the Hurricanes paying tribute to Teddy here tonight. Well, in the most tragic of circumstances, the, the heartwarming response, universally sold by the game of hockey, but the Hurricanes in particular, the stall with Teddy's number five. It's a, just a tragic accident, but it, it just makes you so proud to be part of the game of hockey, specifically the Hurricanes, uh, to create Teddy's stall in just a horrific, tragic time. And Florida will throw the puck into the cane zone, and you saw the response from the hockey world as well on Twitter when all these sticks out for Teddy. If you're on Twitter and social media, you can use that hashtag and see as this puck goes out of play, and that'll bring a face-off up in the King zone. I talked before the game yesterday, hearing about it, uh, with Hall of Famer Marty San Luis, a good friend of mine, and his kids play in the area. Um, and I actually sent the picture of, of the stall, Teddy's stall, to Marty, as well as a couple of former college teammates uh, who play in the area. Their, their sons play in the area, too. and It's unimaginable. And I, so proud of what the Hurricanes did today. It's, it's very special in this very difficult time. And all of our thoughts here going on to the Balkine family. It's a tough, tough number. Carolina, the puck will come out of their zone here. 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first period. 1 1 hockey game between the Panthers and Kings. Now Natchez with a good play. Stepping up on them. Delivering a big hit in the corners. 
the captain, Jordan Stahl, as Florida will clear. And will control the puck, stepping into the cane zone. Back on the play is the captain, Jordan Stahl, with a great back check, and Carolina will clear. Now Weger is able to hang on the puck, and he'll get some help from his captain, Barkoff. Now, twisting away with it is Mackenzie Weger. Talk about a player who made the most of an opportunity last year. When Aaron Eckblad got hurt, Weger stepped up his game for Florida. Now Duclair will send it to Eckblad. Back behind the Canes net for a moment. Duclair will get it out to Uberto, the goal scorer for the Panthers tonight. But Carolina takes advantage, loose puck. Seth Jarvis throws it off the boards and goes after. And Weger playing his offside as a righty now with Eckblad. He has become a very good NHL defenseman. Step on reverses the puck for Jarvis. Tries to get it to Lawrence, but Florida will get to it first. Huberto sends it up for Duclair. Duclair, his pass intended for Lundell, comes to the point, and Lyon gets a toe. As that shot was hammered on from the blue line. Lyon has been steady. After the first shot he faced, got past him. Not much he could do on that attempt. He's made six saves since. <laughs> An equipment malfunction there. A piece of equipment actually went into the net. As Lyon has really been a nice story in the early going. Joe Thornton, you can tell the beard, gets to the puck in the corner, but he'll give it up, and now Svechnikov skates out with it. Svechnikov into the Florida zone. The puck will roll on him, and Gudis will take it away. Right back, though, to Trocek. That gets to the point. Shot doesn't get through for me and Cole. As Cole has been on target with his shots lately. Now this puck will score free. And a break, it's Owen Tippett, but Tippett can't handle the puck. He'll throw it out to the point. That shot is hammered on by Gudis. And Lyon will catch that quickly as the Canes defense making plays in front of their netminder. 9.52 left here in the first period. The Carolina Hurricanes and Florida Panthers tied at one. Here early in the first period as we welcome you back to PNC Arena on back-to-back -back nights. The Hurricanes in 2022 through their first two games had 13 goals and everybody has been contributing. Rod Brindamore speaks on behalf of the number of players getting on the score sheet. That's what we have to have. We need everyone. We talk about it all the time. Guys, we expect and we want to be everybody has to contribute. Well, that's the way this team is built. Thanks for that, Abby. And Again, up and down the lineup, the Hurricanes expect everyone to end up on the score sheet. As the Canes keeping the puck in the Florida zone right now. Bounced off the backboards. It'll be scooped up by Lucas Carlson. Carlson's pass goes forward for Vetrano. Along the boards, he can't get it into the Canes zone now. It was Squirt Free. Thornton tried to get to it, but Ian Cole knocks it out of the Canes end. Lyon with a good play to stop it and leave it right there for Cole. That, the depth, can, it, it applies to every position. Lyon beat the St. Louis, St. Louis Blues. Huge game. Lajoie Chatfield on the blue line. Then you talk about Jack Drury and company. Mason. It's organizational depth like I've never seen. And I, I just want to speak about the degree of difficulty. Lyon last played for Chicago December 18th against Milwaukee. But I watched him this week in practice. He got my attention how sharp he was. He gives up that first goal. That could have really gotten negatively between the ears. And he made the follow-up save. And now he should be settled into this thing nicely. It is his 17th career start, so he does have some NHL experience. But it is nice to rely on, as you mentioned, Tripp, the organizational depth. And don't forget, the Canes have Jordan Martinuk, who's itching to get back into the lineup. And the job Brendan Smith has done when pressed into duty for the Carolina Hurricanes. You are absolutely right. This is as deep as they have ever been. And it reflects in the 24-7-1 record that they have compiled for Rod Brindamore. Meanwhile, Florida has played very well for Andrew Brunette, their head coach, 14-7-5. They're very good at home. Road, though, has been a different story for Florida this year. As the Panthers have the puck in the Canes end, Barkoff has it. He looks for a lane. His shot doesn't get through. That bounces off of Mammon. Into the corner. Verhage tries to get a stick to it, but Pesci's waiting for him. Now, Coach Kaniemi tries to play it away from Verhage. Stahl chops at it, and he gets it past Ekblad. Carolina does a good job of stopping any momentum that Florida was creating on that line. Now, Barkov pulls the puck out of the Kane zone and hands it to Gustav Forsling. Forsling heads up. He gets his pass to Hepiniami. Hepiniami, though, sends it to the middle of the ice. Nobody was there for Florida. Now it's kept in. Gudis, he'll throw one that Lion blockers off of the glass. 
Kept it at the point. That shot will get right into the catching glove of Alex Lyon from Forsling. A look at a couple of what shouldn't have been challenging saves for Bobrovsky that the Canes will go to school on. I mean, pucks from the sharpest of angles that nearly went in. Once, Spechnikov, and out twice. And, and you know everybody on the bench has observed that. And they're going to continue to try to, to work the short side to, to maybe get rewarded or certainly create a rebound if you get to the front of that first. I love that you're talking about that. And we get the shot of Nino Niederreiter doing just that, talking about where to put the puck as the Canes win the draw. Jesper Faust, he'll throw it for Spechnikov just out of his reach. Jumping up on the play with Slavin from his defensive position to get a stick to it. Carolina battles along the boards. Get a good look at Svechnikov there. As the puck is along the boards and will be scooped out by Florida. D'Angelo to retreat and pick it up for Carolina. And Jesper Faust will pick the pocket of Huberto and Carolina has the puck. In a 1-1 hockey game, 7.25 remaining here in the first period. Svechnikov tries to get the puck in deep and can't. will jump out of the Florida zone and the Canes have to tag up. Two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference meeting here tonight at PNC Arena. Now cross-ice pass and Lyon with a huge save as he robs Lusterine. Now another shot out in front. And Lyon gets the pad to that as Pepiniemi was there. A shot from the point and Lyon steadily kicks that away. Three big saves by the Canes netminder. Right back into the zone. Lombard for Florida. As the Panthers trying to hem in Carolina. Lusterine will get to it but Ian Cole gets to it first. Luster Reining comes up with a steal along the boards. Cole goes back after him. Trying to pin Luster Reining. He'll try to pull away from Cole. He'll send it around the boards. For Brandon Montour. Plays it right back behind the net for Owen Tippett. The Canes will get to it and will send it out. Good play by Niederreiter up to Teravainen. Ajo gives chase on Montour and throws the body on him. Teravainen will just throw it back into the corner. Heck of a shift from the young Hempany Emmy uh, for Florida, only to be answered by Alex Lyon, who's a nice, a really good early story here in the first 14 minutes. Florida wraps it into the Canes end. He'll be scooped up by Shea. He'll chop it to Lawrence. Lawrence will get it to Seth Jarvis, who's been noticeably good here in the first 14 minutes of this game for the Carolina Hurricanes for their rookie. Now Pesci will wrap this, and this misses everyone. And this is going to come back to the Hurricane zone for icing against Carolina. And today's featured item of the game is the 47 Brand Canes Wordmark Cleanup Hat. That is a good looking hat. Secure yours at CarolinaProShop.com. Well, that's going to upgrade the look of any Caniac. Much like Lululemons did many years ago. Well, that for my wife for Christmas, Lululemon, that is. Not the chapeau. And that might be on order now. As the Canes will clear the puck out to center ice. And he turned around and back in the Canes zone by Verhage. Big hit by Shea along the boards on them. Now Pesci will play it forward for Jarvis. And now Lawrence. Well, his attempt hits a body. Montour loses an edge. And Stepan tries to come out with a puck. And that pass deflects off of Lawrence. Doesn't go anywhere with it. And Florida's able to clear. Able to pick it up is Natchez as the puck found it way, found his, finds its way back to the game zone. First time Barkov starts a shift, no stall. Now he, almost a turnover behind the Canes net. Nothing coming of that as Slavin cleans up the loose puck. And stall. Lose an edge in the Florida zone. The players are hitting the ice in both zones right now. Duclair, though, turns on the Jets, gets into the Kane zone, and will wind a backhand along the boards. Trying to set one out in front was Huberto all alone. No attempt there as Lundell was looking for him. Now Lyon without his goal stick. And that pass from Huberto misses everybody. Can the Canes clear? Stahl tries to get a body to it. Uyghur's able to keep it in. Huberto gets to it. Along the board, Slavin gets in front of it. And Carolina will clear. Kokiniemi comes up with a puck. Back of a play by D'Angelo. And now but Lyon just gets his stick and gets back. Now Florida right back into the Kane zone, but actually we're getting a huge hit delivered by Radko Gudis on Vincent Trocek as Florida keeps the puck in. Now Trocek gets a chance to work around Gudis and throws the puck to center ice. 
Jesper Faust will send it into the Florida zone. Trocek takes another hit from Gudis, but gets the puck to Svechnikov. Up top, Pesci. His drive doesn't get through. Shea will find it. Shea sends the puck to Svechnikov. He'll turn for Trocek. Too far for Trocek. Forsling will get to it, and he'll clear it past Pesci. Shea. He'll beat Lomberg to it in the Kane zone. Carolina will clear. Lomberg flew the zone. Florida does it with regularity. You have to make sure not to take a breath because he nearly could have had a breakaway, and they do that often. Florida trying to do that again as Tippett deflects the puck to the Kane's blue line, but great play by Ethan Bear to stop that chance. Now Weger heads up. Send the puck to Thornton. He'll wrap it in the Kane's own line. We'll play it. Nice play off of his backhand to take it away from Vetrano, who is trying to intercept that pass. Now Ajo he uses his leverage to get the puck to the Florida blue line no further. Now the puck is right back to Teravainen for Carolina. Deposited into the Florida zone. Niederreiter puts a body on Carlson. Puck stays in. The Hurricanes complete a partial change. Florida hands on to the puck. Two minutes and 40 seconds, and Niederreiter with a huge hit at center ice on the Florida captain, Barkov. Carolina looking to clear, and they will. Jarvis, he's got some jump. He'll lay it back. Lawrence's shot was targeted for the upper corner, but goes just too high. They hit Bobrovsky in the head. Now a two-on-one developing for Florida. Shot in a line, and they'll score. Verhage leaks one past the Canes netminder in Florida. Goes on top, two to one. Well, the Lawrence shot, it went off of Bobrovsky's head, and all three forwards get caught deep. See, all three caught deep below the goal line, and then Stepan takes a chance. So you had four forwards, and that creates the clear cut two on one. The job for Lyon is to deal with Verhage, and in some way, oh, it maybe clips the top of the, the blade of Jacob Slavin and changes direction. You know, at that point, it's two on one. Slavin has the pass. Lion, his job is the shot. You want to get a stick on it if you can, but I think you're better served if you're Jacob. Just let it go clean through. And that clipped the top of the blade, and I think that was the difference. For Verhege, his ninth. Comes late here in the first. Now Trocek, a snap one that goes as Bobrovsky gets a shoulder of that and deflects it over the top of the net. We'll get a whistle behind the play, stopping things. With 2.06 left in the first period, Carter Verhage has put the Florida Panthers up top, 2-1 to one in Carolina. Oh, yes, Barry Kokaniemi has, since we hit December, heated up six games, eight points that matches his previous 26 games with the Carolina Hurricanes trip. I think there are two chapters in this nice development for me going all the way back to two months ago. The West Coast swing when he moved to the middle of the ice in, no, in November and how good he looked at center. But then when you get back healthy, no room at the end at center, so shifts back to the wing. So what has really impressed me is his bite. His compete has been something that you haven't had to look for on a nightly basis, and he has been rewarded uh, with his production. Those eight points, one goal, seven assists, and a career-long six-game point streak. For Coach Kanyemi is Florida ices the puck here, and a face-off coming back to the Panthers zone. Andrew Brunette, interim coach for Florida. It's not surprising to me that he has hit the ground running and done a really nice job. He's an old school, but a progressive thinker. Uh, he couldn't really skate as a player, but was a heck of a natural goal scorer. He is a very good offensive thinker. I think he's old school in the right ways, but he thinks progressively in the right ways, too. Trocek wins the draw, and Svechnikov snaps one that goes wide of Bobrovsky. Duclair, clear it into the Kane zone. Barkov gives chase. Shea waiting for him. Shea plays keep away with the puck from Barkov. Pesci takes a peek. We get a good look at Brett Pesci. Now Jonathan Uberto will have the first goal of this game for the Florida Panthers. Cross for Duclair. Now behind the net, Shea will get to it. His backhand is sent to the neutral zone. Carolina trailing 2-1 to one to the Florida Panthers. A minute 20 to go here in the first period. Shot is 
Ripped over the Canes net and will come all the way to Sveshnikov who has room to operate. Sveshnikov into the Florida zone. He'll snap one in a quick glove by Bobrovsky. As a quick snap shot by Sveshnikov has to be handled there. Heck of a release from Sveshnikov and you mentioned it's 1,700 games for Joe Thornton. Very close friend uh, with Freddie Anderson. They were teammates of course with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that, that's just an awesome achievement. His longtime teammate in San Jose, top of the list. The game's played Marlowe. The Kings will win the draw. Slavin, his shot misses everything and comes out of the zone. In fact, for one Jordan minute Hicks, from 1701 tonight, just the sixth man in NHL history to play that many games. As Carolina ices the puck with 54.5 seconds left in the first. <laughs> this is how long he's been around. I'm thinking about when I was playing the minors. A college teammate of mine at Harvard played a handful of games with the Boston Bruins. And during those games, and I'm 48 years old, he played with Joe Thornton as a Boston Bruin. Joe was a rookie back then, then he moves on to San Jose. Continues driving. It just, it, he just loves the game. He can't move like he used to, but his passion for the game and the way he thinks it, one of the great distributors of the puck of all time. In his heyday. On the half wall. Oh, Joe Thornton. Number one overall pick for those Boston Bruins. And now for the Florida Panthers, some veteran leadership for this group. As the puck will stay in the cane zone. Going after it's D'Angelo. He looks forward, finds Coach Kinyemi. Coach Kinyemi has no play. He'll ease this one into Florida zone, but a little too far. So that'll be icing again. So a defensive zone draw coming up for Carolina with 35.8 seconds left in the first. I think everything that you expected with regards to how you're gonna win or lose this game has come to fruition. And that is, are you gonna be able to match the transition of Florida? I, in person, they, they just jump, jump, jump. And you can take advantage of that as this thing moves along. And the puck will be won by Florida. And Ekblad will backhand one. And That'll find its way on Alex Lyon, but he'll swallow that puck in another draw coming up in the game. So. I, I have in mind Lyon's period. You know, just to finish my point on a two-on-one, if you don't have a really good chance of blocking the shot completely, preventing it from going on goal, get out of the way. You know, because I'm confident he would have made that save. Slavin's, you know, he, he's just trying to prevent it from getting through, and it's an unfortunate redirection. But sometimes I think the right thing to do is let the goalie deal with a clean shot. Slavin coming off of four blocks last night against Calgary. Trying to make that play. For the Canes, still plenty of time here. Florida, less than 30 seconds left here in the period as the shot put right on for Lyon as he has to make that save. Now Barkov tries to spin one for Verhage, but Carolina gets a stick to it and pops the puck back into the Florida zone. 13 shots for Florida, nine for Carolina so far here in the first period. Now another rolling puck and Lyon confidently scoops that one, looking like a second baseman, and he'll hang on for a Another face-off coming up in the Hurricane Zone. There's a basketball game here today, so of course Carolina, having played last night, did not skate. The Panthers skated at the nearby practice uh, facility. I went over to watch it. I was with the Florida broadcasters, and boy, were they ever marveling <laughs> at the facility that it is. And that's something that wasn't there for a long time. And suffice to say, they were impressed. Those little touches make the difference, as you know. And they're really gigantic little difference. touches either. A gigantic difference. Training facility, players that train here in the offseason. You know what it is? It's a game changer. He draws one by Florida, but Uyghur fans on the shot, and Carolina is able to ease this back into the Florida zone. Three seconds left in the first period, and the puck on here, neck flat stick, and that's how the first 20 minutes will come to a close. Coming up, it's the PNC Bank Intermission Report. Tavo Taravainen will discuss the first 20 minutes with Trip Tracy. We'll also find out what Abby and Shane have to say. We'll have after 20 coming your way. Well, this has lived up to the expectations. We knew it was going to be hard hitting between Carolina and Florida. 20 minutes in the books. In Carolina trailing the Panthers 2-1 to one after one period of play.
Davo, Sniper Central, but before we get to that beautiful shot, what do you think of the period? Uh, yeah, it was not great. Uh, there's two good teams, teams right now, and uh, they were a little better and, at the first, so we got to be better. At what point on your goal, oh, what a beauty, did you decide to shoot, and did you see room on the glove? Yeah, I got a little time. I tried to get a little more inside and get my shot, and just uh, got lucky that went in. <laughs> my gosh, I mean, that was highlight reel. Uh, when you look at your second period last night, that's when offensively you won the game. What do you think you're going to need in the middle period to replicate that in this one? Yeah, we got to play harder, just win our battles, and um, play simple, that's it. Hey, good enough. Uh, go have a good, simple period. Thanks, Tavo. Thank you, Trip. Thank you so much to Tavo Teravainen. What a shot this was. Abby and Shane, right after this brief timeout. Official bank of the Carolina Hurricanes and brought to you by UNC Rex Healthcare, official healthcare provider of the Hurricanes, and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Welcome into the PNC Bank Intermission Report. It's the Panthers who lead the Canes 2-1 here inside PNC Arena. Abby Labar, Shane Willis here with you guys. And we continue to share our condolences as we remember 16-year-old Teddy Balkine. Shane, a tragic loss in the hockey community this week. He lost his life in a scary on-ice collision. And Shane, you have a son who plays hockey. You're in charge of youth hockey. And this shakes everybody to the core, but I'm sure this affects you personally. Yeah, and I think it comes to mind everything you think about when you watch your kids on the ice and the joy it brings to you but I know we do not think about it enough of the things and the efforts they put in and such a tragic event that happened in Connecticut and I think this hockey community continues to thrive together as I put young kids into the game in first goal program so many people come back and say it's such a different feeling it's such a part of a family and a community and I think that is what has really stood out over these last day and 24 hours in receiving text not only from the organization and it started from the top with Tom Dundon last night as this story broke to everyone in marketing, everyone here. What can we do to support this family and pay tribute to this young man? Well, what can they do, Shane Willis? They remembered Teddy Balkheim by setting up a locker for him inside the Hurricanes locker room. The players also taped their sticks pregame and they put Teddy and his number, number five on there. He said it absolutely heartbreaking to think about. This was a kid just playing the game that he loved. So it's really sad, Shane. It's such a sad story. Story, but as the hockey community thrives and tributes pour out across the league for this family, they know they're supported. They know tomorrow will come and the league and the entire sport will be there to help them move along. Rod Brennamore is saying if there's just one thing we can do to help remember him, and that's one of the things that the Hurricanes will, were able to do here tonight. Speaking of tonight, as we shift gears into what we've seen on the ice here, the Panthers and the Canes, two really good hockey clubs. We heard Tavo Teravine and talk about it. The Panthers, though, were the better team in the first period. Well, the pace was there, and the Hurricanes matched their pace. Florida gets the early goal. Young Alex Lyon back in net. Obviously, hasn't played in a while. He continues to get up to speed. But I really thought the physical presence and the Hurricanes leading the way, out hitting the Florida Panthers and matching that. You're going to have that edge here tonight, and Nino Niederreiter led the way, as we talked about in the pregame show. But the Hurricanes started finding their speed. This one's going to be tight throughout the third period. They need to continue to push, find one more gear, and continue to get shots through on net. Well, last night, the Hurricanes have put the pedal to the metal in the second period. Can they do it again? They'll build off of Tavo's goal. Coming up, we have highlights. Stick with us. Hurricanes Hockey is brought to you by Spectrum. Spectrum Mobile has unlimited talk, text, and data. Save up to 40%. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. And Honda. Hondas are selling faster than ever. See your Honda dealer of the Carolinas to reserve yours today. And by Hardee's. Pick your favorite new $5 meal deals from Hardee's. Feed your happy. The Carolina Hurricanes, after the first period, find themselves trailing the Florida Panthers 2-1, to one, but plenty of hockey to get to and plenty of hockey for us to talk about. But, Tripp, we just heard some great remarks from Shane Willis about how the hockey community will rally around Teddy Balkine's family for people who do not know the high school hockey player in Connecticut who lost his life in a tragic accident two nights ago. And uh, I know that Shane said it perfectly, but it's something else for the hockey community, as we know, that will rally. Extremely powerful based on who Shane is and what he has meant in terms of the growth of youth hockey here in the triangle uh, and what the, the Hurricanes right from the top down uh, in setting the tone to um, 
to be part of uh, the game coming together. I have a nephew that uh, played a game this morning um, about 10, 15 minutes away from where uh, Teddy lived. Uh, they had a big banner after their morning game. Uh, we love you, Teddy. Rest in peace. It just, that was very powerful, powerful commentary from Shane. Well, it's for us, let's uh, get back here to PNC Arena and the highlights from the first period. And Florida got it going early. One of the things you don't want to see is an early goal in a minute, five seconds in. Jonathan Huberto is going to provide just that. As this thing goes along, you're going to want tighter gaps in the neutral zone so Florida can't gain entry. You want to deny the blue line if you can. Heck of a look, positioning himself to Claire to find Huberto and the quick release uh, to beat uh, Lyon. But the Canes would get the answer on the power play. Tavo Teravainen, he said that he was just lucky. I don't think so with this shot. He also talked about how he got slightly to the interior of the rink, but I talked about possession before position. Your, your power play can't go to work if those three guys, and Ajo gets the puck to D'Angelo. What a gorgeous shot. High to the glove on Bobrovsky. Well, you don't want to give up goal early. You don't want to give up one late, but Carter Verhage is going to find some room and maybe an unfortunate tip, and it gets past Alex Lyon. I'm going to look at this uh, in, in a second. Some of it's a bad break, but some of it you have to live for another day. Well, that is the goal that puts the Florida Panthers up 2-1. to one. And it was a physical period. Nino Niederreiter introduces himself to Alexander Barkov. Second period coming up next. Svechnikov had a two-goal performance last night, helping Carolina beat Calgary 6-3. And let's take a look at the shot chart for Andre Svechnikov, presented by Verizon, Trip. Uh, you look at that, and you can see that, you know, it, he was deadly outside the dots. <laughs> and that tells you what an elite shooter he is, because you'd like to see uh, those different circles and X's inside the dots. But that is how talented he is. One of, a wrist shot in transition the second period, and then that slapper late in the game. Yeah, the slapper on the power play. That was the sixth goal for the Canes, and the cherry on top of the proverbial Sunday. And when that game was on Friday, as the second period's underway, Florida with possession of the puck in the Cane zone. Man spinning around with a puck. It'll find Verhage trying to get it to Park. Off instead, it gets the man, and he'll fork it wide on the back end. As Maxine Mammon found himself all alone in front of Alex Lyon. And the Canes escape. Barkov has gotten into this game. Now Verhage on the rush, and he'll pick the corner and score. Carter Verhage, second of the game. He goes far post. And Florida extends their lead to 3 1. Now Barkov set up a chance, and then Florida made a good change. Boy, you would have thought that. Weger backhand, you had two guys that could have come up with it. You didn't come up with it. And Verhage has an outstanding shot, a player that elevated opportunity coming across the state from Tampa to Florida. You can see that he was looking, deciphering what his shot location was gonna be, never down at the puck, and beats Lyon for a second of the night. Verhage's 10th of the season. And again, Florida scores early. Now the Canes trying to find an answer. Going the puck in front, it bounces away from Faust. Duclair tries to get a step on Shea. Puck's a little too far for the Florida forward. And behind the net, Uberdo sticks in there, but it'll be Trocek, the former Panther. And we'll send it to the Florida blue line, knocked down by Gudis. Gudis' pass is deflected into the Kane zone. That's going to be icing, though, against Florida. Well, I mean, the transition that you were worried about coming in, uh, and so far, it has, it's been a concern as the rush chances favor the Panthers 6 0. They now have three goals in transition when you look at it, but still plenty of time. We're not at the halfway point of regulation to adjust, but that's the biggest area of adjustment needed. Gaines with a face off, and that shot is snapped just wide of Bobrovsky's net. As Ajo flung one towards the Florida net kept in by Pesci at the blue line. His shot deflected by Lundell. Into the corner, Florida will get to it, and we'll send this the length of the ice. This will come right back into the Florida zone. I mean, the last goal, you had numbers. I mean, Weger is just, he's just trying to relieve pressure on the backhand. You had two guys that just weren't able to come up with a puck on the wall. And 
know, for Higgy has been a true find. You see these players that are, are victims of depth in an elite organization get a better opportunity, and he's grabbed the bull by the horns as a Florida Panther, no question. And the early goals now in five periods, Florida in this season series. I mean, they scored just 228 into the first period down in Florida, and they got out in front of the game. They're scoring a lot of early period goals. Minute five to start the game in 35 seconds here in the second period to provide that 3-1 lead. Now Tara Vining comes up with it. Puck will be deflected by Ajo as Bobrovsky got hung up behind his net. Now Ajo providing the forecheck. Puck is kicked to Gudis. Jarvis will come with it. Ajo is given a heavy shove there by Hempeniemi. Puck still in the Florida zone. Gudis trying to cut off Tara Vining. Ajo bothered by Gudis gets it to the point. That shot is wristed. Doesn't make it all the way through as Shea's drive was blocked down by Lundell. Florida will clear in Carolina. Brett Pesci will pick it up in his own zone and leave it there for Shea. As he is chased by Hempany Emmy, but Shea skates away from him. He's got some room through the middle of the ice. He'll lay it off the cross for Kokini Emmy. Now back for Shea, who drove the net. He'll be removed from the puck. Lucerinen tries to clear. Carolina will keep it in. Kokini Emmy gets a stick to it. Now step on, trying to push the puck forward. Lomberg gets a stick to it, but the Canes will create a turnover. Natchez for Bear. Bear, he pulls the shot, and that'll go off the side of the net. Bobrovsky might have gotten the glove on it as Bear read the play. Canes now with a good forecheck. Step on, keeps it in, pushes it behind the net, but Montour will pick it up for Florida and flip this out of the zone. Lomberg can't control it, but the Carolina Hurricanes do. Natchez has it. He steps down the middle of the ice. He lays it off. Shot by Cole is elevated. Carolina to the rebound. Kokinemi across the ice for Cole. Looking for Kokinemi to step on. Takes a heavy hit out front. He'll draw a penalty, and the Canes will be going on the power play. Yeah, it's going to be a trip, and didn't take long for Carolina to cash on their power play in the first period. Good shift involving the defense. Bear tried to expose the short side. Justin St. Pierre with the announcement, one of the two officials. Net drive from Natchez, and he draws the trip. And you had good chances from both defensemen on that third pair. Bear earlier, and then Ian Cole. See if he can win this power play faceoff and go to work immediately. Well, for Carolina, it is a power ball power play. They hit the number on their first attempt in the first period. They'll try to do it here. On the face off, the puck bounces to Bobrovsky. Played around in Florida. Gets to the loose puck and will send it back in the game zone. Bobrovsky was very smart. Initially, he was going to cover that puck, but then wisely kept it moving, uh, leading to the easy clear. They're looking. Tony D'Angelo lays the puck back for Ajo across to Natchez. Natchez can't handle the pass. Lundell will get to it. Still loose. Barkov almost got a stick to it. Played away by D'Angelo. Now Natchez with some room. His pass intercepted by Lundell again at the Florida blue line. And he'll throw this back into the Kane zone. And already 35 seconds gone in the Carlson tripping penalty. Now time for Carolina. Natchez goes cross ice. Tara Vinen to Ajo. Florida, though, will chop it away from the Canes and send it back into the Hurricane zone. Lying way out of his net to play it. He'll just settle it down there for Tony D'Angelo. D'Angelo looking to make a stretch pass, but that's intercepted. Florida will get to this, and Canes power play looking a little discombobulated here. Well, I mean, look, after you don't win the faceoff, you see in living color how tough a power play entry is. Carolina will finally tip the puck in deep from Svechnikov. Kokiniemi chases after it. He's backed up by Svechnikov. A roll around for Jarvis. Jarvis takes a peek. He'll get the puck to Niederreiter. Cross ice. Svechnikov back up top. Slavin behind the net for Niederreiter. To Svechnikov. Too far for him. And Lomberg will come out with the puck and he'll clear the zone. He lays it to Lundell. Florida now jumps in. And there's a shot from Ekblad that Lyon has to glove. And Blatt had a good chance coming out of nowhere. And after the terrifying power play goal, it would have been easy for Florida to sit back, not apply pressure. And this has been a pressurized, take advantage of all the pressure points penalty kill. And the best chance of the kill is shorthanded from Aaron Ekblad. I, I want to talk about Marty Natchez because I thought his whole season turned early last March in a game in Florida where he got benched for about seven and a half minutes. And all of a sudden, Carolina was trailing. He set up a tying goal. 
then scored the winner in overtime. And he learned the value of playing both ends of the ring. And I think his game's a bit off right now. Can he have the similar rebirth that he had against Florida last year? And Gaines could certainly use it here as Carlson will step out of the penalty box. And Florida kills off the power play, but the Canes have a two-on-one developing quickly. Stahl trying to find Lawrence. He'll get it back. Shea will get a stick to it. That rolls in, but Bobrovsky will hang on to that one. Well, when the Canes are on the road, you can join Stormy and the gang at the Carolina L House. The next Canes watch party will be at the Garner location on January 18th. When the Canes take on the Bruins, that's Carolina L House, the exclusive sponsor of Canes watch parties. Two excellent teams here in the building this weekend. If you were down 3-1 to the, the Calgary Flames, typically how stingy they are as a team defensively, it's a different ball game. Florida has had an outstanding year, but you're gonna get your chances. They can't go down into lockdown mode. It's not in their makeup, at least right now. Carolina wins the draw. Teravainen pitches it wide. Florida will fork it out of the zone where Bear will settle it down. He'll find Jarvis across to Teravainen. Teravainen puts on the brakes. Now he'll leave it for Bear. His shot, rebound attempt by Ajo as he tried to go between the legs and Bobrovsky makes the save. Now Vetrano on the loose puck. Plays it off the boards for Thornton. Thornton drops it back. And he picked up there by Tippett. He'll throw one on, and Lyon makes the save. He'll throw it behind his net. Bear looks to clear, and the Canes will. See if it sticks. A little bit of an adjustment, at least for now. Jarvis bumping up and playing with Ajo and Tara Vinen. Now Florida back into the Canes zone. Lomberg and Bear get tied up. Correction, that was Madden who got tied up with Bear. Now Florida will just throw the puck from blue line to blue line. Weger throws it in, deflected by Verhage, who's got two goals tonight for Florida. Puck comes for Svechnikov. Carolina with it at the Florida blue line. Back off the boards. Good work by Svechnikov, beating Weger to the spot. Canes keep it in. Florida can't clear. Good job by the Hurricanes at the Panther blue line, but a loose puck finds Verhage. And he'll dump it off for Barkov. Barkov into the Kane zone. He'll feather one across the ice looking for Verhage. Misses him, and the Canes have numbers if they break out. Faust, he'll get it forward for Trocek. Back to Jesper Faust, but that's going to be whistled offside for Carolina. 13-14 remaining in the second period, and the Canes down 3-1 to the Panthers. trail the Panthers three to one when you think of players that can ignite this team and ignite this crowd Andre Svechnikov comes to mind he did just that last night with his two goal performance and one of those goals was his 70th goal and guys when you look at this right here Russian born players he becomes one of five to score 70 goals before his 22nd birthday that's some pretty darn good company if you ask me Abby, excellent stuff, and so far in this very young calendar year, what I liked most about the way that he set the tone in Columbus was the mental toughness of sticking with it. And that's, a, I think, a very encouraging wrinkle that I hope continues. That's a pretty good list to be a part of as well, with some of those names that we just saw, like Pavel Burry, Alex Ovechkin, Ilya Kovalchuk, and Evgeny Malkin. That's an exclusive company when you're talking about goal scorers in the NHL. And he's got plenty of time to add to that list. Maybe track down a name or two. Florida. Uberdo will get to the puck in the cane zone. Throws that in the corner. Gustav Forsling pushed off the puck. Shea will get to it along the boards for Jesper Faust. Faust finds Pesci. Quick pass for Pesci along the boards for Sveshnikov. His pass deflects off of the skate. That'll be intercepted. Back comes the Florida Panthers. Pulling up Hepniemi. Shot right on and Lyon makes the save. Alexi Hefniemi gets it back to the point. That shot blasted wide. And Lyon will jump on a loose puck. Pesci's pass there hit a skate in the offensive zone. That's what created transition. And a look at Igor and Yelena Svechnikov, Andre's parents. Their other son, Evgeny, scored a goal for Winnipeg a few days ago in Arizona. And the only draft I've ever been to. And Kane's owner, Tom Dundon, had a Swede in Dallas. And that's when I met Igor and Yelena. They came up to the suite right after Andre went second overall. They are fabulous people. And you can see the focus of Igor. And, you know, it's super to see him here because when he is in Russia, Andre 
calls him after every game. Enjoyed speaking with Yelena on the mom's trip that she was on. We went to Nashville a few years ago. Yep. And uh, if you don't know the story, it's been chronicled, documented of what the Svechnikov brothers' parents did to allow Andre and Evgeny to get to this point to be NHL players, as this will be icing against the Carolina Hurricanes and moving, allowing their sons to move to different cities in Russia to get exposure to play. And I know that the Canes are certainly grateful for that with what Andre Svechnikov has been able to do. Well, I'll never forget that sweet that I mentioned. Um, because I don't speak other than a few words much Russian, but Igor and I really hit it off that night. I mean, we had a great time. And like I said, Andre calls him when he's in Russia with the time change after every game. And here comes Marty Natchez from Czechia, formerly known as the Czech Republic. They wanted to be known as Czechia now. And he will throw the puck back into the corner, and Carolina will get to the puck. Stepan rolls one through, but Montour will intercept. Gaines will knock it down at center ice. Kokaniemi tries to get to it, but it'll be handled and knocked down and a shot put on by Lomberg. That'll be deflected over the top of the net, though. Cole will get to it for Kane for Carolina. He'll play it forward for Natchez. Now to step on. Across for Bear, and Carolina will just deflect this into the Florida zone. 11-20 left here in the second period. Kane's down two to the Panthers. And come back Kane's, though. Their last two games they've been down on the scoreboard. And Found a way to get back into it. In fact, scoring four consecutive games and stall with a big hit in front of the Florida bench. So he deposited at least a Ryan in there. And now Carolina trying to get a four check going. Stall again with another big hit out in front. The shot put right on. And Bobrovsky makes the save as Niederreiter got free. The, call, the, the Canes down 3 1 are starting to abandon some of their matchups. They're juggling their lines. Stahl has not played recently against Barkov. You're down 3 1, and he is trying to lead his team to get back in this game. Three big frames on this line Stahl, Niederreiter, and Lawrence. And the quick release leaning away from Niederreiter almost allowed that puck to squibble through low. Looking for his 11th goal of the year there. Bobrovsky with his best save of the period. And now on the draw, Florida wins it back to the Kane zone. Slavin's clearing attempt hits Barkov. And having to tag up on the play was Mammon. Now Carolina will ease the puck to stall off of his stick, and Florida sends us back into the hurricane zone. That'll be icing against the Panthers. I want to look at the, the importance of hitting the net when you have one, two, three, four Panthers join the rush. Let's roll it forward. If you don't hit the net, remember Verhage's first goal late in the first period? You don't hit the net or that went off of Bobrovsky, all of a sudden you're caught. And you can count it. So you always want to make sure you hit the net in transition. And Aho will win the draw. Jarvis tried to push it to Pesci, but that was knocked forward by Mammon. Carolina, though, right back on it. Sending the puck behind the Panther net. Bobrovsky out to play it. Keynes will cut it off along the boards. Aho tries to get to it. But it'll be played forward by Florida up to Verhage. Look back in. That's knocked down by Teravainen at the Canes blue line. Florida will try to spin it back in. Verhage just is able to pop this into the Canes zone. Carolina quickly on it. Up to Aho into the Florida zone. Aho, he'll lay it off. Teravainen shot. Bobrovsky makes the save. Aho tracks down the rebound in the corner. He'll play it back for Teravainen. Teravainen takes a heavy hit from Gudis along the boards. Puck still free. Now it's Barkov in control just for a moment. He'll flip it to the Canes blue line. Or Pesci will have it. Teravine can't handle the pass, but Florida's offside. More than halfway through the second period, Carolina trails Florida 3-1. At the Discover matchup in the tail of the tape between the Panthers and the Hurricanes trip tells us why both these teams have over 20 wins this season. Well, I, I mentioned at the top of the show, I, they play incredibly exciting hockey. And, you know, there was a day where the top teams in the NHL, I'm not going to call it flat out boring, but it definitely would call it mundane hockey. So that's a great sign for the NHL. But I, I still think the Hurricanes are, are trying, because of the, the disruptions in the schedule, get back to their team game because they pressure so much. They need these tight gaps. So if there's any looseness, you come off of it pretty significantly. Jesper Faust will 
have the puck, but he'll lose it. Florida will flip this back into the cane zone as Uberto got a stick to it. Lyon comes out of his cage to play it. Wrapped around the boards for Carolina. Out of the zone, Trocek's backhand pass to Sveshnikov. Sveshnikov heads up at the Florida blue line, looking for Trocek, his pass. Disturbed by Uberto, kept in by the Canes. Brady Shea from his defensive position. Jumps it down for Trocek, now up top. Svechnikov waits, he'll get it back across. Shea, his shot goes wide. As Brady Shea was looking for another goal. What a pass from Svechnikov, the one line that has, for good reason, stayed together. Svechnikov, Trocek, and Foss. Now Shea mixing it up at center ice. He and Lundell exchange a couple of shoves as the puck was deposited in the Florida zone. Now Natchez intercepts Gudis' clearing attempt at center ice, throws it back in the Florida zone. Gudis with a tight turn, though, will flip the puck in off of Lomborg. And that'll roll in the Canes in, where Lyon will have to play it behind his net. Now into the corner, step on. He'll try to clear. Lutheran will get it. Almost found it to the front of the net for Lomborg. But the Canes coming right back out. Natchez will deflect it for Derek Stepon. Stepon into the Florida zone. He'll tie it back for Code Kanyemi. Now step on. And he can't keep it in as he's bothered by Hemp and Yemi and right back into the Florida zone. Step on, by the way, has had quite the career against the Florida Panthers in 24 games. 29 games, he's got eight goals and 17 assists for 25 points. Now Jacob Slavin trying to play the puck away. And Dan O'Rourke gotten away for a moment. He and Justin St. Pierre are officials tonight. Carolina, though, will get to the puck and put it in deep into the Florida zone. Keeping it in at the blue line was Natchez, but his slap shot goes off of Frank Vetrano, and Vetrano with some speed into the hurricane zone. Vetrano will snap one that goes wide. Kept in at the point by Weger. We get down low for Thornton. Thornton will find a way to get it to Tippett. Tippett's drive hits the side of the net, and the Canes will clear. 7.15 to go in the second period. Carolina trailing Florida, 3-1. Well, Toronto, a little give and go. He'll snap one that goes wide. And Lyon watches it bounce behind his net. Bear will get to it for Carolina. His pass is cut off by Gustav Forsling. He looked like a free safety reading the pass. Carolina, though, will have it momentarily. Now Cole sees it end up on Barkov's stick. Barkov lays it back for Vetrano. His shot is blocked by Ethan Bear. Now Barkov behind the Canes net. Bear and Cole watching Barkov. Barkov. He'll throw it to an empty board. Florida will keep it in. Now it rolls, and Barkov almost gets to it. Good stick by Ian Cole to knock it away from last year's Selkie winner. Now Forsling sends it across for Gudis. Gudis takes some room. He shot right on, and Lyon chests that away, and the Canes will clear. That's shift from the third pairing playing against Barkov, Cole, and Bear. And Barkov has to be licking his chops because he's not seeing Jordan Stahl now with a two-goal lead. Barkov tries to feather one through, but the Canes with a good job interrupting that pass, and it finds Seth Jarvis. Jarvis splits two Florida Panthers. Goes in deep into the Panthers over the corner, out in front for Stahl, and Bobrovsky has to rob Stahl as the Canes captain was on the doorstep. Now Pesci has it. He'll send it across for Shea. His shot right on and hung on to by Bobrovsky. 5.51 left here in the second period. Carolina down 3-1, but Seth Jarvis and Jordan Stahl almost made this a one-goal game. Five fifty-one to go in the second period, and Sergei Bobrovsky has a bit of a experience advantage over Alex Lyon coming into tonight's game. Five hundred and sixty-one games for Bobrovsky to just twenty-three NHL games for Alex Lyon. Well, the Kings are starting to build something here, down a couple of goals in this period, and so Bobrovsky's toughest work of the night, in all likelihood, is in front of him, not behind him. Face off. To the right of Bobrovsky, it's one and Shea, the hammer and score! Traffic out front, screening Bobrovsky. And the Canes off the draw, making a one-goal game. Boy, we saw the gun from Terravine in the first and Laser Central. Boy, Jordan Stahl might have gotten a break there using his hand to eventually win that draw. 
No, maybe he didn't. Yeah, the linesman was right on the spot to detect if he used his hand. He didn't. Gets the puck back to Pesci. Right in the wheelhouse for Shea. And what a net front. I mean, an ideal net front from Lawrence. Boy, what a job there. I mean, that linesman. Because if Jordan Stahl plays that with his hand as a faceoff is going on, penalty. Yep. And he didn't. What, that could be a building block for Stahl. And what, what a run. Brady Shea is on. That net front from Lawrence was super. He had the net front on Shea's goal in the third period last night as well. Brady Shea's fifth of the season. As that was an absolute laser off the draw. It's funny, Trip. You talked about that with Ron Brindamore in the pregame show Hurricanes Live. All these set plays that the Canes have been able to run. And that was drawn up perfectly. And of course, great work by Stahl in the circle to keep that play alive. And now Brady Shea, he is on some kind of heater when it comes to scoring goals. Four goals in the last three games for the Kings defenseman. Think about Stahl's hit earlier in this period. Down a couple of goals and the compete to win that draw. He gets a secondary assist. That's why you're the captain. Loose to Ryan will stride into the Kane zone. His shot misses the mark. He'll get to the puck and spindle it behind the Kane's net. But Carolina giveaway behind the net. Now out in front, second opportunity. That's pitched wide by Lombard. As Coke Kenyemi got a little loose with the puck there. Now Florida still hanging on with it. Loose to Ryan's backhand. That goes wide. Tracked down by Hepaniami. Alexi Hepaniami walks the blue line. He'll send it across, and that's hammered by Montour and Lyon with his best save here in the second. Florida, though, hanging on to the puck. Lomberg has it. He cycles. He'll snap one in. Lyon with the save. And he'll freeze it down right there with 4.14 left in the second period. That save on Montour is gigantic with a capital G. With he had, He's not a big guy. You see how he had to elevate to see where the puck was with the net front? Locates, push, and makes an attacking stop. Carolina comes back. They've had some comebacks and win this game. Remember that one, circle it, put an asterisk next to it. Love how active and determined he was to locate that puck over traffic. Face off to the right of Lyon. Joe Thornton, his facial follicles are thrown out of the circle. Frank Vetrano will step in, the Massachusetts native. Canes will win the draw, though. And Jacob Slavin, good look at the Canes defenseman. As he motors the puck out. We get it to Trocek. Now across Sveshnikov, his shot. And is bothered before it can get to Bobrovsky. Now Trocek behind the net. We get it to Slavin at the point. Now behind the net for Sveshnikov. We'll take a hit from Uyghur. But the puck will stay in. Good read by D'Angelo across the ice for Slavin. Now Trocek tries to get it into the corner, but his pass is intercepted, and Thornton will skate it out for Florida. This will deflect him, and Lyon will have to cover that up, and he'll freeze it right there. And you mentioned the Canes' comeback strip. Well, Saturday in Columbus on New Year's Day trailed 4-0, 1-7-4 trailed 1-0 last night to Calgary and won 6-3 tonight. Down 3-1 on the scoreboard. Now it's a 3-2 hockey game. I look at the time machine, the regular season, 2005-2006. Carolina won the cup that spring. They had a, a ton of comebacks. And the only way to truly believe you can do it is when you do it. Then you believe you can do it again. Well, the Canes have done it. They've done it well twice. Now they're looking to make it three times. And Gustav Forsling will take the puck right back into the Carolina zone. And Mammon, one pass too many as the Canes will deflect that to the boards. And Forsling spins. Throws it off the backboards for Barkov. Barkov. He circles the Canes net. He throws it to the point, but Gudis can't handle it, and that will squeak out of the Canes end. And the Panthers have to tag up. Puck bounces in the middle of the ice. Jarvis watching it. Gudis, though, will get it up to Barkov. And go across the ice for Mammon. Three minutes left here in the second period. Slayton with a great stick denying the Mammon pass for Verhage. Carolina trying to clear. Gudis, though, keeps it in along the boards. And Mammon was waiting for it, and he'll put a backhand on him. Lyon uses the mask to make the save, and he will flop on top of that one, freezing things there. ACC men's basketball. We got a doubleheader coming up on Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern. Clemson 
travels to Notre Dame to take on the Fighting Irish. And then the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech go up north to take on Boston College. You can watch all of the ACC action on Valley Sports out and stream it on the Valley Sports app. The Canes have gotten away from caring about Stahl playing against Barkov, but they still, as was the case on that last shift, want Slavin against the Florida captain. I would keep your eye on Jordan Stahl. He's on the ice now closely in the remainder of this one. I think he may be from, hurt from again. Lundell will take the draw. The rookie against the Canes captain, Jordan Stahl. Considerable more experience for Stahl as Lundell is in his first year. Jordan Stahl is in his 16th season. Canes captain as he digs in. Uberto waved into the circle, but the Canes will win it. And Niederreiter will get to the puck. This line resulted in the goal that Brady Shea scored. As you accurately pointed out, Trip, some big bodies on this line for Carolina up front. So that's a massive humanity behind the Florida net right now, trying to get to the loose puck. Uberto can't clear. Sent in behind the net. Lawrence goes after it. Carlson takes a shove from Stahl. Pesci jumps in to keep it in, but that'll be past the Canes defenseman, but his partner, Brady Shea, waiting for it in the neutral zone. Right back into the Florida end. Bobrovsky will play it around. Niederreiter cuts it off along the boards. Lawrence gets it to Niederreiter. Niederreiter out front, tries to get it to Shea just too far. Now Florida thought they could have a break, but Duclair is interrupted by Pesci. And those two meet behind the Canes net. Great work by Brett Pesci to cut off Duclair, but Duclair still hanging on to the puck. He'll send one out in front. He'll get it right back, circling the net. Thrown out to the point. Gudis, he'll put a shot blocker away by Lyon. Now along the boards, another shot from a sharp angle is Lomborg, and that will be deflected out of play by Lyon. A few minutes ago, I telestrated when you jump, if you miss the net or turn the puck over, you're cooked. Big frames. Lawrence, nice job taking off the skate, but Nia Ryder's got to take that to that, although it's a good Florida stick, so now you're caught. And now Brett Pesci, good stick on puck, causing the turnover on Duclair. I understand what Nino was trying to do, but that is much the same thing I mentioned about, you know, if you miss the net when you have numbers going to create, the counter the other way can be deadly. That's what Brittany Moore told you in Hurricanes Live. Florida likes to fly in his own and get their transition going that way. Minute 39 to go here in the second period. Because as soon as Nino comes up with that puck from Lawrence out of the corner, the defenseman's jumping. So if there's a, you know, something that creates a clean breakout, you have four guys caught. We do the face off to the right of Alex Lyon. Draws one by Trocek. Bear will get to it for Cole. Can't clear, kept in by Lusterine for the moment. Now pops out of the zone. Less than 90 seconds remaining here in the second period. Epinieri spins away from the coal hit. Bear, though, does a great job on Lombard. Forces the turnover. Sveshnikov, he tries to go around Ekblad. He does, he'll get the puck in deep. Good work by Faust on Uyghur. Now it finds Trocek up top. Bear, Bear's shot. And that'll hit Uyghur in the slot. And then Uyghur got a hold of Jesper Faust's stick. And they did a pirouette. One minute, Florida will gain possession of the puck. Less than a minute to go here in the second period. Puck in the corner. Lombard goes after it. Company Emmy is after it as well, but Carolina. They're better to it. Ethan Bear up for Trocek. Trocek. He tries to walk around his man. As Forsling cuts him off. Svechnikov has a shoulder for Barkov. Montour has it taken away by Jarvis. Jarvis to the point. Slavin has it. He looks behind the net for Svechnikov. A little too high for Svechnikov, and Florida will clear. 25 seconds left here in the second period. Gains down 3-2. Loose puck at center ice. Mammon will deflect it into the Kane zone for Hagee watching it, but Carolina and Slavin will flip this one high to the Florida blue line. 10 seconds to go here in the second period. Forsling. Eases this into the Hurricanes end. Verhage will get to it. Send it out front for Mammon. Now Barkov all alone out in front. One second left in the period. Canes deflect that away. Slavin hangs on. And that's how the second period comes to a close. Coming up on the PNC Bank Intermission Report. Trent Tracy talks about the game with Brett Pesci. We'll have after 40 with Abby and Shane coming your way and highlights of this second period. Well, this game is everything we expected it to be between the Panthers and the Hurricanes.
40 minutes in the books. We've had big hits, big saves, and big goals for the Carolina Hurricanes as they find themselves down a goal with 20 minutes left to play as it's 3-2 Florida over the Canes. the conclusion of the period it seemed like you started to build something what yeah. do you think yeah uh, i think we definitely found our momentum um it's kind of the first time i felt all game we kind of had him a little hand in their d zone so um we got to try to do that again in the third you know, the ability to pass a puck in the wheelhouse i mean brady's going it's it's great to see but what do you consider putting a puck in the wheelhouse like you did uh i don't know i just I just, I think the biggest thing is, is kind of velocity. If you can, honestly, the softer it kind of comes over and the flatter it is, I think the easier you, um, it is to shoot it. Um, right now, I'm just honestly looking for Brady. He's got the hot stick, so um, I'm trying to give it to him as much as I can. That was a great pass. Okay, Florida has a deadly transition game. Basically, you're only down a goal. When's the right time to jump, and when's the right time to live for another day? I think we just got to keep living for another day. I mean, no matter what, with this team, the way they play in their transition, they like to take risks. And, um, you know, you play right and you keep guys in front of them, they're going to cheat and we're going to get out of them in rushes. Um, I think, you know, we're, we haven't done the best job getting it 200 feet below the goal line um, and kind of really wearing their D out. Um, you know, if you kind of chip it half ice in the neutral zone there, like you said, they're one of the better transition teams in the league, so we got to do a better job of that. Brett, that's good stuff. Good luck. Thanks, Trip. Really good content from Brett Pesci. Look at this, right in the wheelhouse. Shea did the rest. Second intermission continues after this. Carolina Hurricanes Hockey is presented by PNC Bank, the official bank of the Carolina Hurricanes, and brought to you by UNC Rex Healthcare, official healthcare provider of the Hurricanes, and by Advance Auto Parts. Advance your auto. In Raleigh, things are getting rowdy. start of this third period they will be ready and the hurricanes will be ready as no well no doubt about it Shane. hey on characteristic for the hurricanes right now they're trailing in face off percentage but that goal by brady came off of a set face off play how crucial is that well it's something we've talked about the past two games and how dominant the carolina hurricanes have been inside the face off circle but leave it to a guy we talked about in the pregame show in Jordan Saul coming out using his size, using his strength to win that face off back to Brett Pesci, who slides it to Brady Shea, who makes no mistake, hammer it again. Another big part of the goal, net front presence from Stephen Lawrence. You have to have that with Bobrovsky. And as we heard from Brett Pesci, they started to get more and more pressure deep into the zone, pressing the defense more in that period. They will need to continue that in the third. Well, what else did we hear from Brett Pesci? That word transition, that feels like the word of the night, Shane, when you're talking about this Florida Panthers team. They're getting those scoring chances off the rush. Right now, seven opportunities off the rush compared to the Hurricanes three. And I think all three of those goals for the Panthers came in transition. Yeah, two for sure. One, you'd give three because it was an odd man rush, but three goals in transition coming up with full speed through the neutral zone, pressing the Canes defense back, opening up those shooting lanes. So in this third period, do exactly what Brett Pesci talked about. Get it down below the goal line and pressure their defense. I think the Florida Panthers have had too much of an easy time getting quickly out of their own zone. If the Hurricanes can set their forecheck, have their players coming over the top, create their own turnovers, and have more offensive zone time, they'll create more and more chances and get right back into this game. When you're talking about playing some of the best in the league, you can't take a breath against them as we take a look at the stats. They're 40 minutes of hockey right here in PNC Arena. The Hurricanes looking to extend, I guess tie it up and then extend the lead. We'll have highlights next. Stick with us. We want to make sure goes home happy. Canes trailing after 40 minutes. 
three to two to the Florida Panthers. And Trip, I know that you like a lot of what Brett Pesci said in that interview we just heard you do with him. So how can the Canes make that come to fruition? I, I love that. There is an accountable nature and, and an accurate read of the game. And I thought his was appropriate. Um, that Florida, it, they're going to cheat even with the lead. So the key to this, Shane Willis touched upon it, is establishing your turf uh, below the offensive goal line. Well, let's get a look at the highlights from the second period. And again, Florida strikes early in the frame, 35 seconds in. They're going to take advantage of some loose play, and Carter Verhage is going to get a second of the game. Yeah, you know, that was just, I think, nine out of ten times. One of the two guys comes up with a puck, Mita Ryder or Jordan Stahl on that swipe uh, from Weger. And Verhage's had the hot hand. He is a guy with a ton of confidence. We're going to look at this again in a second, because initially I worried did Jordan Stahl touch it with his hand? The compete. The compete is the biggest takeaway. Pesci puts it in the spot with the Lawrence net front uh, that Brady can just keep rolling. Well, for the Canes, Brady Shea staying red hot and trip. We're just going to have to take him to the drive through right now for a little Taco Bell take. What do you got for us tonight? Well, you know, it, it's pretty simple uh, but necessary uh, that I do believe that Carolina's third period will be their best 20. And with Niederreiter and Lawrence, I like the stall line right now. I think they're going to have a big period as well. And then the comeback, Canes twice. Can they do it a third time? As we get ready to start the third period, let's get a look at tonight's Liberty Mutual Insurance crease coverage. The Canes net miners have been very good with a combined 2.16 goals against average as a trio trip. And I think it's necessary, the man of the moment, Freddie Anderson, Having a Vesna-like year, but Lions save on Montour in that second period. And hopefully, if another comeback occurs, I mean, that is by country mile his biggest. Well, the Canes have been down their last two games. Of course, New Year's Day was the 4-0 deficit that they erased in Columbus. They were down in the first period against Calgary. Both those games, the Canes scored four straight. I'd love to do that here tonight. And they are trailing 3-2 here as the third period is underway. And Jordan Stahl throws this one into the Florida zone. Matt Flatt will play it. He'll take a bump from Niederreiter out in front for Stahl. And that is just absolutely rocketed and missed. The Canes were that close to tying this one up 16 seconds into the period. Now you can hear the clink and hit the post. The pressure from Niederreiter. Follow up from Lawrence and hit the bar. No doubt right now who Carolina's most dangerous line is. Stahl had Bobrovsky beat, but rings it off of the crossbar and out of play. Now Florida trying to fly the zone, but the Canes able to catch up to that, throw it back into the Panthers' end. Weger trying to skate away from Niederreiter. He throws it to the neutral zone. It'll bounce back in, but Niederreiter didn't exit in time, so offsides are the Canes. I want to look back at Carolina's goal in the second period. Kyle Plummington, watch his eyes here. If Jordan Stahl, in a continuation of a face-off, plays it with his hand, it's a penalty. And that is the Lions been doing a really good job. Because the first look that I saw, I was worried he played it with his hand. He didn't. Look, I mean, that is a referee with his eyesight, staying out of the way, making sure that it wasn't a face-off violation. That is excellent work from the linesman, then the compete from Jordan. Kyle Flemington and Kyle Murchison are linesmen here tonight. Along with Dan O'Rourke and Justin St. Pierre. Carolina down 3-2 here in the third period, but Jordan Stahl won't get credit for a shot on goal. Was about a half an inch away from tying this one up. Now Trocek sends one out in front. Bobrovsky will play that to the boards. Pesci jumps in from his position, throws it behind the net. And player entangled in the middle of the ice. No worse for wear. As Huberto comes into the cane zone, he'll lay it off for Gudis. Gudis goes across the ice for Duclair. Duclair will flip that one forward for Lusterinen, but he can't handle it as the Canes block that attempt and throw it back out to center ice. Now Lomborg tries to play it back into the cane zone. He'll lose the handle. Carolina can only get it as far now. Aho almost comes up with a turnover. As the Canes, Sebastian Aho was lurking, looking for a turnover. Tara Vinen tries to get a stick to it, but the puck will bounce to Mackenzie Weger. He'll flip it to center ice. Cole, he'll settle it down and backhand this one back to the neutral zone. Now the Canes play it forward. Jarvis, he gets a step and scores! 
Seth Jarvis ties it up. It's three apiece in Carolina. Ian Cole made a key play at his own blue line. I thought he was dangerously close to closing his hand on the puck, but he moved it just in time. The swipe almost like Weger did on the Verhage goal in the second. And what puck support? Supporting Cole from Ajo, turning and burning from Jarvis. And I watched Jarvis in this spot. 10 or 15 shots before yesterday's morning skate against the Flames. And with his head up, different shot locations, depending on what was given. And the Canes have gone after the glove side. Oh, what a goal. Seth Jarvis continues his excellent rookie campaign. Well, Florida throws the puck in the Canes on Thornton trying to make a play off the side of the net. But the Canes will survive and now an attempt as that shot is hammered by Stepan. And Bobrovsky has to make the save. Clearing attempt not up by Carlson. Canes will keep it in back for Stepan. Stepan. He'll turn and twirl and throw one off the backboard. Bear jumps in to keep it in. Ethan Bear gets a little bit of help from Stepan, who cruises from right to left. Now Stepan is dumped to the boards by Carlson, but he's able to get it out in front. Natchez back to Kokaniemi, but they couldn't connect. As Kokaniemi just couldn't get enough of the blade on that one. And now Barkov will settle things down for Florida. He'll play the puck back for Radko Gudis. What a start to the period for Carolina. Now Barkov cuts across. He'll leave it as Verhage was looking for the hat trick, and Lyon makes the save. The tie game. The return of Jordan Stahl playing against uh, Barkov. Now Lawrence gets to the puck, sends it for Stahl. Into the corner. Stahl absorbs a hit from two Panthers. Plays the puck around the boards. Niederreiter with a thunderous hit on Forsling along the side of the boards, but Florida comes out with a puck. It's Barkov trying to stick handle through three canes, still hanging on to the puck. He'll send it across, out in front, and a quick shot was snapped on him. Lyon makes the save. As out in front was Mavin. Now another shot from Ekblad. That doesn't get through. That hits Stahl, the Canes captain out in front. Ekblad keeps it in at the point just for half a second. Niederreiter will get to it. He'll clear. Now Verhage. He's given a shove by D'Angelo. And Stahl sends the puck to safety for Lawrence. Best shift of the game for the Florida captain, Alexander Barkov. That reach and his ability to distribute the puck. Now Carolina will ice the puck as Brady Shea didn't gain center ice. And one more look at it. Look, you ever look down at the puck? All those uh, great young hockey players, boys and girls, were hanging at that same end of the second period, and they're Jarvis. Can you gain enough comfort? You don't have to look down, because then you can look up and figure out where to go with the shot. And you practice like you play. 15, 20 shots I saw in that exact spot yesterday in the morning. He went most of those shots to the blocker. It was actually on equipment manager George Alves, well after the morning skate. Look up and figure out where to go. Jarvis is always one of the last players out there after the morning skate or practice is working on everything. And his sixth goal of the season comes at just the right time for Carolina. Now Jesper Faust put some pressure on Forsling, and the Canes come up with a turnover. Svechnikov will get to it. Now Brady Shea, he'll lay it off for Trocek. Trocek and Duclair bump along the boards. Duclair will get to it and send it to center ice. Pesci, his pass, intercepted, sent out in front for Duclair, and Lyon will kick that one out of play. Face-off coming up in the Kane zone. Well, I mean, these are different types of comebacks. I mean, the one in Columbus a week ago was historic. Yeah. Last night it was surviving the first period, preventing Calgary from extending that lead. And tonight I got Rod wisely changing things up up front. The only line that stayed together was the Trocheck line. And the Hurricanes, I think, have started to get to their identity even though that goal from Jarvis in transition, but they've started to establish their offensive zone play in sustained fashion. Face off to the right of Lyon. Carolina will win it. Picked up by Cole. He will send this the length of the ice. That'll be icing. And for Carolina, you know the Canes have been on fire. The Charlotte Hornets would like to get there as well because the Milwaukee Bucks will be in Charlotte Monday. It starts at 6.30 Eastern with...
Hornets live. You can catch it on Valley Sports Southeast. It'll be streaming on the Valley Sports app. Face off to the right of the line. It's won by Carolina again. He picked up and cleared out of the zone. This time, no icing on the Canes. Weger has to play it away from Jarvis. Now, Weger will slap this one, and Florida will ice the puck. So this will come back into the Panthers end. I looked at some advanced statistics after 40 minutes, and chances for, chances against. And I, I've liked Cole and Bear. And obviously, Cole starts to play Jarvis scores. They now have been on the ice for three chances for, zero against. Slavin D'Angelo, 6-2. to two. It's actually the Shea Pesci pairing that has given up the most chances of the three defensive pairs. Face off in the Florida zone, pushed out to the neutral zone. And that goes to two players who the Canes added this offseason. Ian Cole, the two-time Stanley Cup champion with the Pittsburgh Penguins in 16 and 17, and Ethan Bear and the Edmonton Oilers who had a big block at the end of the game last night against Calgary. Wasn't sure of his status. Now Carolina playing the puck behind the Florida net. Now back to the point. Shop shot. Put wide of Bobrovsky's net. Kept in by Slavin at the point. He'll wrist one. That goes just wide. Bobrovsky had to have the catching glove ready. Jarvis got a piece of it. Now Carolina. Marshall Lomberg skate through the neutral zone. And he'll wrist one. Misses the mark and comes all the way back to center ice where Montour settled it down. His pass misses everyone, goes right on Lyon. Uh, the puck is left for Natchez. Natchez has got to see him. Natchez steps looking for Kokaniemi. His pass is deflected away by Montour. And Florida was looking to fly. Now Lomberg into the cane zone. He stood up by Pesci. Oh, and the referee's arm goes up. 13.57 left here in the third period. Rod Brindamore doesn't like what's transpiring, but he does like that the Canes have tied this one at three. Seth Jarvis with the tire. 3-3 three, three in Carolina. Brett Pesci in the box for the Hurricanes trip. And uh, Lomberg uh, just to interact and, you know, if it was interference on Luce Arena, Way back in the first period, it's interference here. Ten years ago, great hit. All players ever ask for is consistency, and why wouldn't we have a night to see if the penalty kill can continue to be a central story? Second-ranked penalty kill, and the NHL goes to work again. Operating at 89.8%. Meanwhile, Florida's power play, 18th. 18.9%, but that game all the way back in November, Florida was three for five with the man advantage. Kane's penalty kill has been outstanding since that date for sure. Now it's worth the cousin Lyon! Robs Duclair! Oh, what a glove saved by Lyon, but the puck's still free. Florida working it around up top for Ekblad. Now Barkov. He'll send it across for Duclair. Back up top. Ekblad shot, and that's absorbed, and Lyon hangs on. Face off coming up in the Kane zone. Has he ever stuck with it? Moving from right to left. On Duclair, what a pass. And Lyon is playing like Mufasa. Heck of a feed from Huberdo into a one-timing Duclair. Duclair did not get all of it. As this game has moved along, Lyon has been the Lion King. The Hurricanes lose the draw. Ekblad has it. He works it, Barkoff, back to Ekblad, back to Barkoff. Tries to send it down low, that'll be deflected and picked up by Jacob Slavin. Slavin heads up, he'll look and of course he'll do the right thing. And just flip this back into the Florida zone where Ekblad has some room, being watched by Ajo. He leaves that to Duclair. One minute gone in the penalty to Brett Pesci. And Florida back into the Kane zone. Running it around, but Slavin will come up with a loose puck, he'll get it to Ajo. Aho with some speed. He's got a running mate in Shea. Aho pulls up looking for Shea and just can't deflect it. Good idea there by Sebastian Aho. Just eluded the stick of Brady Shea. And now Florida back to center ice with Duclair. Aho, like Pesci mentioned, he knows the hot hand is uh, Brady Shea. Different points in the year. He's probably taking that thing himself, but he's thinking, just get it to Brady and give him a chance. 25 seconds left on the kill for the Hurricanes. Florida. Now working their way through the neutral zone. 
As it's kept in by Joe Thornton. Now his pass for Lundell. He can't handle it. And the Canes. Stephen Lawrence has it. Lawrence and Jesper Faust. And Lawrence can't get it across to Faust. But just five seconds left in the penalty to Brett Pesci. 12 minutes left here in the third period. 3-3 hockey game. Verhage, he gets the puck to Petrano. Lion, he's not sure where it is. Still loose, we'll get a whistle. Well, that's not in Matisse, but it's a save and a big one for the Carolina Hurricanes. A little lip service <laughs> between ZZ Top Thornton and the Yale Eli Alex Lyon. He's smiling. Nice play to Verhage. And I like what D'Angelo did here. He just gave the shot to Petrano and allowed Lyon to come up with it. He was torched all over the place, but he came up with it prior to it. Yeah, it looked like even Florida defensively. Eckland and company, they're just trying to deny anything to Brady, Brady Shea. The way he's going, he just couldn't receive that pass on the tape. And Ajo has such a high hockey IQ. I'm sure he looked and said, Brady's feeling it right now. So let me just see if I can buy some time so that he can do the rest. Well played by Shea to work his way behind the defenders. Put himself in position for that attempt. And the Canes penalty killers continue to be magnificent. Another kill for Carolina. Florida had three shots on that power play. Alex Lyon was good as well. And again, speaking of the penalty kill, the Hurricanes have killed 28 consecutive penalties. It's the longest Hurricane streak since 2015. But it was 36, which is the franchise record. And the thing that amazes me, and Lyon makes the huge save on Duclair, but for the most part, whoever the goaltender has been, his best work of the night has not been on the penalty kill. As the Hurricanes do such a stifling job of denying entry. Now Florida will get to the loose puck on the faceoff to the right of Bobrovsky, and will flip this all the way into the Kane zone. No icing. Slavin in control for Carolina. And ship it. Right for D'Angelo. Carolina will sweep this into the Florida zone. Forsling plays around for Gudis. Mammon tries to get to it, but turnover. Picked up there by Marty Natchez. Natchez walks the blue line. He'll send it across to the backhand is ripped by Slavin. And that'll be deflected out of play. He got a chance trip to take a look at the NHL standings. And no surprise here. These are the NHL standings. The Hurricanes and Panthers Trailing the Lightning as far as points go, but when you see games played, they've got quite a few on hand. Man, look at those standings and just put a capital E over the top. Five of those six teams in the Eastern Conference. You talked about it. I don't know when the Eastern Conference was this good. Off the draw, Svechnikov tries to sweep out. It'll go wide. Trocek will get to it. And we'll rim this one, and this will go out of play. With 11.03 left here in the third period. 3-3 hockey game. One more note about the penalty kill. This guy... Never gets any credit. I've called him the horse whisperer, but longtime video coach Chris Hoffine, he's been around since Greensboro. There's a reason when I have my morning coffee and I want to do my prep, there's one guy I want to talk to, and he is a, a maestro of all the video meetings, and he has a lot to do with the kill as well, in my opinion, even though he'd never say it. Robbie Keynes got the puck in, but it will be deflected away in Florida, right back in the hurricane zone. Excellent stick. Guess who? Jacob Slavin. Now Trocek. He'll leave it back for Svechnikov as he tries to walk around Ekblad, but a good play by Ekblad. He'll flip the puck forward for Mammon. But D'Angelo, good defensive play for Hagee, picks up the rebound, though. Circling behind the Canes net. He'll spin, put one right on line with the save. Puck still loose. No whistle. Out in front for the blue paint. Still looking for it. It'll come away with Jacob Slavin. And Slavin cracks out the gap wedge and will just flip this one into the Florida zone. Now, you can't call icing there. That is the latest icing call I have seen in quite some time. Let's see if you can amend and bring this thing. I mean, you have some tired bodies. You have a tie hockey game, just over 10 minutes left. Uh, this, I, I compliment the official because he was right on the spot to make sure this puck was loose. And so play went on. But then, a puck, I mean, just squibbled in. Does Ekblad keep skating? No, 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 no. He went from a gallop to a horse riding it out. Now an all-important face-off in the Kane zone is won by Carolina. 
Slavin trying to get some help from Svechnikov to clear. It's under Svechnikov right now. Uberdo falls on top of the Canes forward, and the Canes will get a whistle. Hey, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I meant to say that Aaron Ekblad, who's having a sensational year, went from being secretariat to a Clydesdale. <laughs> That's what happened there, and fortunately, Carolina now can make a change. Now for the Hurricanes again. There's a good play by Andre Svechnikov. Knew he couldn't get it out. Buck was underneath him. Just stays right there. Almost halfway through the third period. Ten minutes, eight seconds to go here. Tie game, Florida and Carolina. And this shot from the point. Right into the catching glove of Alex Lyon, who has made 30 saves in this contest. I think what's happened here tonight just epitomizes, you know, after being a, a, a terrific standout with Yale, Nothing's ever come easy. Look at what he did at Yale. And yeah, he's just grabbed the moment. And even when it hasn't been easy, he's stuck with it so admirably. And he was a Hobie Baker finalist for the best collegiate player in 2016 at Yale. Something about the Ivy League producing goaltenders trip. Now the Panthers will send this into the cane zone. Shea plays it around for Pesci. Good work there by Brady Shea. Now this bouncing puck works its way back into the Florida zone. Montour will have to handle it. He tries to clear and does. Brady Shea waiting for it for Carolina. This puck though is going to come right back into the game zone. 9.35 left in the third period. We got a good one between Florida and Carolina. a part of one of the goals here tonight. Four goals for him in the last three games. Not the only blue liner that's been contributing, guys. Four points from defenseman tonight. 27 points for Hurricanes defenseman since December 16th, which currently leads the league. You talk about the contributions really coming from everybody, guys. Good defensive play, but obviously the offense from defenseman. Abby, that's an excellent note because especially in the last eight days, three pairs that can hurt you. Now, Nina Ryder into the Florida zone, sprung by Ian Cole. Shot from the point by Bear, and that's absorbed by Bobrovsky. He'll hang on for a face-off, 9.21 left in the third. And Bear just about added to the theme that Abby was just talking about. And I think you know, Bobrovsky's had a solid night. You, you don't look at any of the goals and, and think him. He had those uh, short side struggles early going. Looking at him, it's amazing for a two-time Vezina winner. But. And this hasn't necessarily been the case for Carolina's goals, but anything inside the dots and in close proximity to the paint, he struggles. He's 33rd in the league. Think about that. When you can get to those hard areas. Ramon storms into the cane zone. He'll lay it back for Barkov. His shot has to be handled by Lyon. Kicked along the backboards. Kept in by Florida. Forsling shot deflected along the side of the net. Barkov will pick it up. He tries to stick handle it. Sveshnikov gets to the loose puck, can't clear. Second opportunity for Carolina to get it out of the zone, and they will. Slavin wraps this into the Florida end. A collision along the boards. Trocek lets it come around for Fost. Fost throws it to the empty boards, and Florida hammers this, and this should be icing, and it will be on the Panthers. I think that this has been a big-time game for Jordan Stahl. And you want to finish it. You know, back 3-1, not a lot going. A huge hit right along the Florida bench. And then the compete to win the draw. Brady Shea scores. Hits the bar. First shift of this period. This has been a, a really nice night, and you hope there's another chapter in store. The team's captain has an assist in two straight games. Had one last night against Calgary, and now Carolina will be going to the power play as Radko Gudis. Clears this one over the glass, and Carolina has a golden opportunity. What drew this penalty? Icing. So, and you can see Goodis is tired. And when you're tired physically, your brain gets tired. And Jarvis creates this. Whoa, getting close to glancing his stick. Well, you can see in the box that Goodis, because he had to stay on off of icing. Fatigue, I believe, was a factor. But I like, I like the rule because when you create pressure like Jarvis did off of that lost face-off, 
you get rewarded. It's a power ball, power play for the Hurricanes. Third time tonight. They're one for two. Tevu Teravaini getting the Canes power play marker back in the first period. And Florida will get to a loose puck, and Carolina will have to lug the mail the distance back into the Florida zone. Get it up quickly, Teravaini. He'll send a backhand on that. Bobrovsky will freeze right there, melting it down. Face off coming up to the left of the Florida netminder. Minute 36 left on the power play. Not an unwise play. Uh, because you get an offensive zone face off. That's something Carolina has had trouble with, and you know, there haven't been a ton of power plays. And Trocek, who was deadly against his former team last season. Can he beat Barkov? Well, Trocek. He'll take the draw to the left of Bobrovsky. Good look at it. Barkov pulls down Trocek, but the Canes keep the puck in. Worked across for Teravainen. Teravainen. Trying to play it down low, kept in by D'Angelo at the point. Good work there by Tony D'Angelo. He'll send it for Trocek. Loose puck, Gustav Forsling will get to it, and he'll find an empty space and send this back into the Kane zone. A minute 15 left in the Kane's power play. Now Ajo, he's got some room, gains the floor to zone. Cross ice pass, Sveshnikov bounces off of his stick, able to control it down low for Ajo. Now work to cross out in front. Trocek has it and his skates. Ekblad gives him a shove. Svechnikov jumps in on the puck. Ekblad can't get to it. Lundell will clear it off of the stick of Tony D'Angelo back into the Kane zone. And we're going to see a high stick here. A good adjustment. Replacing where Natchez had been on this unit with Svechnikov. Natchez just isn't going right now. And, um, and Andre... I think has put together a couple of very good games here to start 2022. And I remind you, I mentioned it earlier in the game, back early March, in a game in Florida, they just got benched in the third period. Rod gave him a chance to respond. He went on to be a star in the month in the league. Well, they just will get the chances. He's on this power play unit as the faceoffs won by Esperi Kokkiniemi. Now Jacob Slavin and this unit have a chance to go to work with 35 seconds left on the man advantage. And there's Natchez. We'll get it across to Kokaniemi to need a rider. Now Kokaniemi trying to get it to Natchez. Weger intercepts that. Kokaniemi, though, stays with it. Gets it to the point for Slavin. Now it's worked across. Jarvis, he tries to pick the short side, and that goes too far. Canes keep it in. Slavin walks the blue line, gets it across to Jarvis. Down low, need a rider. Back up top, Slavin. Five seconds left on the power play. Now Jarvis. Lundell, rookie on rookie. Lundell with a good stick. Jarvis takes it away, but Uyghur is able to sweep it. The length of the ice out of the box comes Gudis, and it's five aside again. That all-important bumper spot on, on the power play. I, I like what Kokaniemi does there. He, he made a heck of a play there. You've got to feel it, where to go with the puck. You have to be a shooting threat. Kane's now one for three on the power play. Florida into the Kane zone. That shot is snapped in the save is made by Lyon. Barkov gets to the rebound. He works that across for Montour. He'll flip it behind the Kane's net. Huberto, he's sealed off by Pesci. Now played along the boards. Montour will keep it in. Verhage trying to find Barkov. Pass is deflected, kept in at the point. Huberto pushing in on Lyon. Lyon makes the save. Puck goes into the corner. Kept right there as Stahl will try to get to it and get some help from Pesci. Pesci with a quick turn up for Faust. He takes a look across and finds Lawrence. Now back to Faust into the Florida zone. Faust snaps a shot right on. Bobrovsky with the save. Rebound is controlled by Florida. And now Owen Tippett tries to go one-on-one. -on -one. Penalty coming up as the Canes touch the puck. And 5.29 left in the third, and Florida will get a chance on the power play when we return. A tie game. By incidental contact, you, you just cannot make this call. Unless you are absolutely sure. Know the player you're calling it on. Offensive zone, 3-3 game, less than six minutes to play. That is an atrocious call. 
I, I hesitate to use the word atrocious, but that is. Kane's penalty killers will have to go to work now. Zach Black, his shot is blocked. Controlled, though, by Duclair. You'll get it right back. Duclair looking to make a play. You'll get it back to Ekblad. Now Barkov, Ekblad worked across. Uberto looks for Tippett. Now Uberto can't control it, and it'll come out of the Kane zone. 25 seconds gone on the penalty to Jordan Stahl. Again, keep documenting what the Canes penalty killers have been able to do. Tonight, they're one for one. They need to make it two for two here. It's Uberto. Throws it behind the Canes net for Duclair. Around the boards, Duclair. Now work it. Barkov, Ekblad, Uberto. Uberto tries to snap a shot. That misses everything. Tracked down by Barkov. And Duclair play Patty Cake with it. Now Ekblad to Uberto. Uberto, top of the circle. We'll get it down low for Tippett. Great play by Brady Shea to sweep across and deny the pass. And the Canes will dig it out of the boards and throw out the length of the ice. And the power play is all about pressure points. And that's a different type of two-on-one. And to Brady Shea on his knees. Ever take away time and space on Tippett. And you get a look at Mackenzie Weger laying it back for Frank Vetrano. Less than 40 seconds left in the Florida power play here. Florida keeping it in by Verhage at the blue line. And they'll send it all the way across. Florida walking the line. It's Lundell back up top for Weger. Across for Montour. Montour will send it for Verhage. He'll get it across for Lundell. Lundell's pass is detected. Good work there by Tara Vinen. And now Florida is going to take away the rest of their power play as an interference call against Frank Vetrano. And Carolina will be getting a power play. Pure guts kill. And Vetrano, yeah, get out of Dodge. And this was a no-brainer of an interference call. And D'Angelo, sure he can develop and deliver a chirp. And what a kill. Let's focus on the greatness of what just happened. I just want to know what Vetrano was thinking going back and why. Well, he was, I mean, the puck is <laughs> incidental contact between Jordan Stahl and Alexander Barkov. This is a no doubt about her. And so Vetrano, he could have been tapped with two for unsportsmanlike. Yep. Power play started the scoring in seven seconds. You're going to go back to work and you end it. Love Alex Lyon, though. Just kept drinking out of the bottle. Didn't even turn around. Don't acknowledge. That's why he went to class at Yale. He knows how to provide a comeback. Now out of the box comes Jordan Stahl. It's a Powerball power play for the Carolina Hurricanes. They're fourth of the night. They're one for three. Now Barkoff will get to the loose puck, but he's taken off of it by Tara Vinen in Carolina. Has a minute 40 of a man advantage to work with here. 3-10 left here in the third period. Svechnikov, his cross-ice pass for Teravainen. Teravainen walks it all the way down low, gets it back up top. D'Angelo, Svechnikov. Svechnikov trying to get it to Trocek. Instead, he'll send it across the boards for Teravainen to Trocek. Now for Svechnikov. Svechnikov tries to get it to Ajo. Deflects to the blue line, kept in by D'Angelo. Svechnikov, Trocek out in front. His shot handled by Bobrovsky. Florida can't clear. Canes will keep it in. Oh, all the way around for Tara Vinen. He'll get it to Trocek. Trocek's pass, though, intercepted by Huberto. Two on one coming for the Florida Panthers. Huberto, he comes in. Stop, sends it across. Lucer Ryan is robbed by Lyon. Well, as Svechnikov saves the day, maybe the game. Now a heavy hit by Svechnikov along the boards on Lucer Ryan. D'Angelo slows things up as Svechnikov heads to the bench. 35 seconds left here in the Canes power play. Tony D'Angelo delayed just enough for the effort of Svechnikov to get back. Now Niederreiter tries to get it past Ekblad. Ekblad takes it away from the Canes forward. He'll just send this back to the Canes zone. One minute, 50 seconds left here. Tie game, 3-3. Hurricanes and Panthers. Carolina, 10 seconds left on a power play. Can't get the puck in deep into the Florida zone. And getting ready to come out of the box 
works is Frank Petrano. Shea, though, he'll work his way in, and he'll slap one that Bobrovsky makes a stand-up save on. Petrano out of the box. Five aside for each team. Carolina one for four on the power play tonight. Minute 25 to go here in the third period. Shea has it. He'll wind it in. Barkoff waits for it. He'll take a shove from Jesper Faust. He'll send it back for Forslund. His pass intended for Verhage. Verhage stood up at the Canes blue line. Canes denying entry. And Radko Gudis goes back and plays it around for Forslund. One minute left here in regulation. Carolina tracks down the puck. Lawrence spins it in. Carolina gives chase in the Florida zone. Knocked away from Pesci, but Slavin waiting for it. Lombard with some pressure on that, but the Canes get it to Lawrence, who hammers one right on it. Bobrovsky makes a pad save. Slavin with a keep it at the blue line. 38 seconds to go here in the period. Ajo with a big collision in the corner, but Florida is able to get the puck out of the zone. Right back for Jarvis from Slavin. He'll send this one behind Bobrovsky's net. Weger has to make a tight turn away from Ajo. 23 seconds to go here in the third period. Florida flips this into the Canes end. D'Angelo, his clearing attempt, gets knocked down. Tara Vineman will get to it, though, and he'll send it forward. Where it'll be picked up by the Canes. Jarvis, Jarvis waits for it, leaves it back. That shot is hammered on! And glove Trocek's try is caught by Bobrovsky. With the game on the line, in his still young NHL career, is this Svechnikov's best defensive play? I say yes. Effort, second, third effort. I thought D'Angelo bought just enough time for Andre to get back. You think where he was as a rookie, as most teenagers are defensively, and what he just did. That is the signature defensive moment for Andre Svechnikov so far in his career. 5.1 seconds left in regulation. 3-3 hockey game. Digging in to take the draw is Trocek. It'll be won back by Florida, and both teams will put a point on the board. As we have got bonus hockey coming up. Overtime coming your way. Hurricanes and Panthers, everything we expected. Why not get a little extra hockey in Raleigh? In Calgary. <laughs> this was I'm putting on a cape moment for Sebastian Ajo. Two goals in that game. <laughs> Don't let the cape get in the way, you superstar. And he went on to have two goals a couple of nights later in Edmonton. And you're going to see Jordan Stahl come out to take this draw. Ajo just finished regulation. You can still see he's still regathering his breath. So Jordan can win it. Now, Jordan's been good. This would be one particular night. I wouldn't necessarily, if he can win the draw, put him back on the bench. Wouldn't mind seeing Jordan Stahl in this three-on-three. -three. But typically speaking, if he can win it, he'll go to the bench for Ajo. Rod's trying to gauge the, the wind of those guys to figure out if Jordan comes to the bench, who's going on. Overtime this year, just the fourth time for Carolina, two on one. 11th time for Florida. They're 5-5, five and five, and the Canes will win the draw. Stahl goes to the bench. So it'll be Slavin, Taravainen, and Andrei Svechnikov on the ice for Carolina. Barkov, Uberdo, and Ekblad for Florida. Now Svechnikov, he lowers his shoulder, cuts in front. Bobrovsky with the save, and he'll hang on as Taravainen was lurking on the front step. That would have been the script. Svechnikov extended the game with his defensive brilliance. At this end of the rink in the third period, he comes on for Jordan Stahl. Power move. Perhaps recognizing Huberto's a forward. Turned and burned, and Bobrovsky makes a fine save. Get a good look in the eyes of Andre Svechnikov. Markov, Ekblad and Huberto staying out there. Trocek will take the draw against his one-time teammate, and Barkov will win it. We'll get it up for Huberto. He's watched by Slavin. Great play by Slavin to take it away from Huberto. And he'll slide it off of Barkov into the Florida zone. Ekblad watched by Trocek. He'll spin and get it up to Huberto. Back to Ekblad. Now Ekblad into the Kane zone. Watched by Trocek. He'll tie him up. But Huberto will come away with the puck as he jumped in the party. 
And he'll give it away for Trocek. Trocek takes a peek. Instead, he'll hang on as Slavin needed to make a change. Trocek heads to the bench as well. And out comes Ajo, Tony D'Angelo, and the rookie Seth Jarvis for Rod Brindamore. As Ajo has it. Ajo tries to work around Weger. But Weger takes him off with the puck. He'll have to spin away from Jarvis. Now he'll throw this. Up forward for Barkoff, who's been on the ice the entire overtime. D'Angelo hustles back, and then Barkoff will spin around and retreat to his own end. And Barkoff nearly completed a hat trick two nights ago in Dallas in one of the more entertaining overtimes I've seen in recent memory. And Barkoff will go to the bench. Weger doesn't like what he sees, so he stops short of the Canes' blue line. He'll turn the puck around. Will be handled there by Verhage. He has two goals this evening. And Verhage will play the puck for Forsling. Forsling will pull away from Natchez into the Kane zone. He'll send it across and Lusterine has that taken away. What a play by Pesci here in overtime. Now Verhage will get to the puck. His Pesci stopped that chance. Now Forsling keeps it into the blue line. Excellent stick. By the Canes, Teravainen, but Verhage will step with it, and then Teravainen's got a way to get a stick to that puck. In Florida, trying to keep it in, they'll just have to re go back to their own blue line. Forsling picks it up. Now Duclair into the Canes zone. Svechnikov takes it away from Duclair. Teravainen back for Svechnikov. As Pesci and Teravainen will go off the ice. Svechnikov takes a look. He'll handle it for Brady Shea. Shea, his pass intercepted by Duclair to Huberto. Huberto tries to get it to Duclair in front. They'll score. Anthony Duclair. He had four points in the first game, and he ends this one in overtime on a setup from Jonathan Huberto. And the Panthers will take this by a score of four to three. Yeah, Huberto scored the first goal from Duclair way back early in the first period. And now you had the flip side. This was some kind of sauce from Huberto to Duclair. And Duclair, who's been on several teams, but recognizes that this is perhaps his last chance, and he has been deadly in Florida. He's been deadly against the Carolina Hurricanes. And once again, just appreciate the, the saucer pass. And then the wise decision, knowing how hard Lyon had to push from right to left to go back against the grain. This was a heck of a hockey game. You know, when you look at 3-1 in the second period, Svechnikov's defensive play, late in regulation that gets you a point. Of course, you wanted the extra one. But, I mean, this was a very, very good hockey game. Well, the Hurricanes, they were down 3-1. They found a way to get one point here against the Florida Panthers. But it'll be Anthony Duclair and the Cats coming out on top. 4-3 in overtime.